you want to destroy, if you want to smash and crush, angel snuck a lot with you, you got to bring the truth. No slander, no jokes, no gossip, receipts, logical commentary. If you cannot do that, you're just going to expose yourself to being stupid for even attempting to do the impossible because you cannot expose Age of Slump Nup 7. We are in a state of emergency. Wrote the song about it? Like the hit? Here it go. Freedom.
and self, and you don't realize it. You don't realize it, that God has been in prison. The devil was able to imprison God. So right inside your own self, your God self has been in prison, and you have a false sense of self running rampant inside the temple. This is why, you understand what I'm saying to you? Yes, sir. We have to bring reality temple here on earth. Reality <laughs> temple here on earth. Uh, yes, sir. We have to realize the enemy is running rampant inside this temple, and we have to recover. All the things on paper that say, if you do this, we're going to punish you by incarcerating you, and you break them, and you're dumb enough to get caught, then you're just dumb. All right, all right. Shout out to Reality's tip on the building. Well, just from us, I got to get him on here, man. You talk about somebody polarizing. Whoa. <laughs> that brother, that brother is, uh, <laughs> I'll leave that alone. Shout out to the brother, though, Justin. trust that feeling does anybody have any questions of me before i get out of here let's see what you guys are saying what's up soul sister rona hey telly i'm the brother that did my uh mike jackson in tunica i mississippi hey now uh hello to terry respect bless up bless up bless up In the year 2019, black folks continue to go through the change rather than direct the change. A community activist named Talik Ibn Rod has made an appeal similar to what Sam Cooke was asking for, a change. It said that the meek shall inherit the earth. We ask when. When will the landlords give the meek a free lease? Mr. Ebenrod is humbly asking for the state of Mississippi.
This is Dusty Basement Studios, and we approve of this message. And that is uh, Brother Talik from the Reality Temples on Earth channel. And if you get a chance uh, to subscribe, please do, please do subscribe to his channel. He's a he's a good brother. You know, he's trying to he's doing good work, and he wants to do good constructive things. He has good information to provide. So please do check out his channel if you get a chance. Welcome to the Reality Temple on Earth. My name is Jeroen, and uh, I would like to say that Angel Snapchat 7 isn't a racist at all. He's a good friend. But you, um, a lot of your video content to me was very informative. You know, the things you talked about had substance, man. And um, you, and I first really knew about you because of JT Rally 1, Real Nigga News. And, and um, <laughs> you and him got into a conflict with each other. And um, when I did my website, you were the only brother. And let me stress that. Because when I did that website, blackcommune.net, and I did the video and I asked the black YouTube community, the so-called black YouTube community, to give me your videos because at the time a lot of brothers were getting flagged and videos taken down so I said you know what you can put your videos on my website so that the message can still be heard for all to hear you know something like you know a little web I, I, I made that website for everyone but you were the only one that gave me permission to use your videos. And I thought that was very honorable of you and really a testament to how much you cared about the black community. In a state of emergency. Want to show about it? Like the hit? Then go. What do you? Cause I keeps it real like that. I keeps it real. Well, I, I can share if you want. Yeah, she's talking about. That's what I'm saying about Africa. Um, I'll call them on the show. Like, 
I, I never missed a show like that. I was moderating, you know, I was on point all the time. I was sharing the show and the other people could start watching the show. Because like I said, I had a great deal of something and I considered myself to be a dying hard member of House of Fashion. That's why you never saw me on anybody else's show. I believe I, I, I had all the back of the time that's the show that I'm gonna see on. So I never tried to move any mind, but I have, you know, heard from other people when they try to realize the content or try to make some money off the show that they did on his platform. I want to take it all the way back to some of my students said as well. Now, do you hear that? Do that sound like a woman that's calling, bro? <laughs> yes, it does. Yeah, I never did nothing to this woman till this day. I never did nothing. Even when she came out, I never said nothing about her, never did nothing about her. But she's mad because I didn't meet up with her in, a, in Atlanta. In Atlanta. Why are you mad about that? I called her. Me and Garfield. Garfield, I tell you, I can call Garfield. Matter of fact, I would call Garfield. I can call Garfield right now. And I'll tell you. I said, yo, Garfield. This girl, man, he's supposed to be coming to meet up with me, bro. We got to get out of here. I don't want to meet up. I don't want to talk to her. I got to get out of here. You know what I'm saying? And so, no, we did that. And she got mad as a motherfucker. She thought she was blocked. She came back mad as hell that I didn't get to meet up with her. Mm -hmm. And then you got this other crazy-ass woman. They call her Sister Noble. How many yes. of you ever heard of Sister Noble? I, I heard, my wife said that she thinks that she thinks Sister Noble may have some mental issues. But they... See, you got this issue. When you see these women bugging out and going and making videos and talking about me, which I never disrespected, you got to look at that. Sister Noble was on the phone with me talking to me. And she was telling me shit like, you know, um, my, my, my pussy is tight. My vagina is tight. It ain't, I ain't been doing nothing for so long. And my, my walls and everything is tight. I ain't been having sex with nobody. I, I'm like, oh, why the fuck is you talking to me about your fucking vagina? Like, what's so wrong? <laughs> Because, see, women know that men love a nice, fitted, tight vagina that ain't been, you know, messed around with a lot. So she was there talking to me about her vagina, and we was talking about something totally different. She went into, and we got it on tape. I got, we got that shit on tape. In fact, she went live one day and talked about the same thing. So she, so you know I'm not lying. It's on, her, it's on one of her videos. When she talked about, oh, I was just telling him about my vagina because letting him know that I haven't been touched by men. So she said that. But why are you telling me about your vagina? I'm a fucking man. I've never met you. I don't want to hear that shit about your shit. Yeah, she's got, you see, she's uh, she's trying to uh, mess with some dude named Angel's Nut Nut. Yeah, Angel, Angel Nut. We call him Angel Nut Nut. <laughs> Angel Nut Nut, but they call him Angel Snup Nut. Snup Nut. But that okay. thing has been in a uh, same asylum for 10 years. Did you know that? Oh shit. Yes, bro. He'll tell you that. He's been locked away in a crazy house for 10 fucking years, man. 10 years. Oh shit. That's crazy. Yeah. Well, she didn't even with that nigga because she's bugged out too. Dude, on her channel, she's interviewing Angel's Nut Nut. Right? Ex wife. And she's going in on. See, the ex wife is going in on the nigga. Saying how crazy he is and all kind of shit. He tried to touch his um, ex wife daughter. What? Yeah. Dude, he did a video banging on the pole for, for um Sister Nova. And the nigga straight up came out and said he wanted to rape Nepal. He said, what? Yes, bro. Nobody said nothing about it. I'm like, whoa, where did he go? Like, y'all ain't saying shit about this shit. This nigga literally said, man, fuck that. I need to go and get some of that and rape that and get that. And I'm like, whoa, this nigga going too far now. Wait, is that video still up? I think it's up. You gotta know. No, sister, um, she told her to take it down. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 told her to take the video down. He said, because, yo, you up there talking about raping another woman. I just can't do that. So, sister, no one told him to take that shit down. These niggas is crazy. That's what I'm trying to tell you, bro. These are some crazy motherfuckers, man. That's on his YouTube. There's a lot of mental mental health issues going on. And we're thinking that because they're on YouTube, we're thinking that they're sane, that they're all right, that they're cool. Now I have a lot of shit going on. Like like that nigga Lex Vortex. That nigga's mentally ill. One oh, minute, that. one minute he will get up there raising holy hell. The next month you
in the name of our ancestors, peace forever and always, and welcome to another edition of what we call the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. I am the gatekeeper, the host of this program, known here on social media. Wherever you may find me, I am known as the mighty, mighty, mighty mm, angel snub nub seven. I am your soul brother. Number one. I want to thank you for joining me on this spontaneous episode of what we call the Realities Temple on Earth. We need to get a shout out to our regular people, the deacons of reality, our warriors who have been putting out uh, some content that has really hurt some folks. <laughs> I mean, the deacons have really hurt some folks really, really bad. <laughs> and we thank, who do we thank? We can't thank God. <laughs> I just say we, we thank the heavens, uh, the universe, however, just just to say something because we know we can't we can't talk to the heavens the heavens is not alive like us we know that we can't talk to the universe things that i'm just happy that the brothers are here the deacons of reality they gave themselves i did not we're going to call ourselves the deacons of reality and the deacons of reality have gone out here in youtube land put out this content and they have given our enemies, those who don't like us, have given them pure hell where the deacons have made their own reputation, <laughs> made their own reputation and it takes us to another level. So I thank ourselves. The deacon said, we thank ourselves. We thank ourselves for this brotherhood. We thank ourselves for this sisterhood of reality. Because we are part of life. We are soul power. We are original. We are brand new. We are unique. We have Im imagination and creativity. We are fast moving, quick thinking right down to the modern times. We can't be stopped. We are the beast. Well, not the beast. We bang on the beast. Taking a, a term or an old saying from Sarah Sutton said it. We bang on the beast. And at one time, I thought that the beast was white. But now we see that this black beast, this Pan-African beast, this comedic Hebrew Israelite beast, the black Christian beast, the black, this blackness garbage is worse for us than the white one. I'm not getting any, haven't had any problems from the white man on, on YouTube in a long time. All our problems come from those who say, I love it, the black people. I love black people. I die for the black people. Then they turn right around and call you a Sambo and a coon, mentally ill, all kinds of names, look up your, your records, put out your address, all kinds of stuff. This is coming from 
the black people, the pan Africans, the blackity blackness that love you. I really, what, how do they behave when they hate you? This is how they show their love. So we thank ourselves, the deacons of reality. We thank Mello, always in the house, all over YouTube with me. Whether I'm live or premiere, Mello, Mello is there. Hold down the fort. The deacon said, we are the future. We are the words of reality. Deacon said, you're speaking facts. As long as we hold on to reality, nothing can touch us. We're the untouchable. We're the unstoppable. And that's why they don't like us. Here we are, a small channel, a small group of people but in reality, we're just as big as the creep that I'm going to talk about tonight. Just as big as he is. Just as big as Tariq Nasheed. Just as big as Yvette Cornell or any of these other suckers. Because we're concentrated. It don't take a lot of us to get the job done. But for them, they're diluted and they're not real, and they offer poor quality. For us, it's about quality, not quantity. We're concentrated power. We are uranium. We're the nuclear bomb. And they are nothing but ever-ready batteries. Computer, are nothing but a battery for your laptop or something. That's why they know it's wise not to try to battle me because the only thing you're going to do is make us stronger because everybody out in YouTube land is not an idiot. And they will see that we got it going on way more than they do. They're just your entertainment. They are nothing but your scam artists and liars and want to make you feel good. But if you truly want liberation, if you truly want to be free, if you truly want to, as Salt and Pepper always used to say, express yourself, then you know it's the soul train that you need to get on. We have Laurel Brown in the house. And I want to ask you, Laurel, have you been on a channel kissing somebody's ass and then you come over here like you ain't done nothing? Because I'm pretty sure I saw you over there with somebody and you was holding their hand and, and cuddling up with them while they was blasting me, you wasn't taking up for me. You wasn't trying to be neutral. But you come over here like nothing happened, like nobody see you. Now, if you write a comment on a video, we see you. If you are in the chat room, if you are in the comment section, I don't watch these videos all the time. But we have the deacons watching, and there are many who support this platform. We watch the chat room and we see different things. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure. And I should have screenshot it. You was over there. Why are you here? Go cry with them. Go be emotional with them. Go slander and gossip and lie and be unjust and unfair with them. That Ebony 433 is over here too. And I know for a fact she thinks that Gay Nollywood 
the boombox cartel guy, he's cute. Why are you here? I cannot stop you from listening to my words. I can't stop you from listening to a video. But we can't block you. Why do you want to come here? Why do you want to be among us? Go and be with those who cry and whimper. Who believe in fairy tales and fantasy and delusions and outright lies. Why are you here? So when I get time, I will block you. And I'm going to block that Ebony 433. I don't want y'all fake ass people on my channel. If I'm incorrect, please let me know. I'm very sure. I saw you over there. I saw you crying with them. Why are you here? I don't like that. And see, the thing about this Laurel, he's been around me a long time. A lot of these people been around me way longer before Sister Nova showed up. And as soon as Sister Nova show up and cry, you believe her. I've been abused, neglected, and angels, a, a woman hater, and you believe all them damn lies because some Shit that you don't even know. You've been around me. Some of these people been around me for years. Take your ass over there. It's about quantity, quality here. Go over there and cry. Give them some uh, tissue or something. Get the hell, get the hell out of my page. You faking, you phony, you fraud. Absolutely, it's about quality. Take y'all fake ass on somewhere. I'm so sick of it. This is the year of the purge. I want all this trash off my page. So when we enter 2022, all this trash should be gone. We can finally be ourselves and finally be among those who are like us. All these traitors, backstabbers, these liars, these flip floppers want to play both sides. I didn't do nothing to that woman. She betrayed my trust. She stabbed me in the back. Talking about what I've done. She stabbed me in the back a long time ago, way before now. And I didn't cry. I let it slide. I'm going to work with it. But as soon as she feels as though she got her feelings hurt, everything is all about her and Piggly Wiggly. Take your pig eating ass. Take your pig wiggling ass on somewhere. Roll out. But I'm not going to be quiet about it. I'm going to let people know if you mess around with this person, they will stab you in the back. They will use you, manipulate you, and stab you in the back. So look, and this is the thing about it. These people claim to be so religious. I believe in God. I understand the Bible. I understand the Quran. If you understood the Bible, and if you truly understood the Quran, and if you truly was connected to that God, then you should recognize God and the gifts and the blessings that God give you regardless to how God sends you your gift. 
I am a gift to you. Because the gift is righteous behavior. And you claim you're righteous. You reject the water and you're thirsty because you don't like the glass. We are more righteous than Christians. We are more righteous than Muslims. We're more righteous than these religious Pan-Africans and the pro-black. We're more righteous than all of them. And if you listen to Aliyah Muhammad, one of her complaints about me is he thinks he's so righteous. He thinks he's better than everybody. Because righteousness is good for me. I am not trying to be a righteous person because I want to go to heaven. I don't want to. I don't want to be a righteous person so I can get some kind of prize or some kind of gift. I want to be a righteous person. Because it's a benefit to me and it's the best thing for my life. Not because God say so. Not because so-and-so say so. Because I love it. But see, you have a problem with righteous behavior because, because you like the fancy cars. You like the whole is women, you like the money, the fame, the things of this world. I don't. I don't care nothing about none of it. I don't care about their money and their fame and fortune, the garbage they call success. But you do. You want some of it. I don't want none of it. And that's what you don't understand. We have to have discipline. And that's one of the things that was good about the nation of Islam. It teaches people discipline, but at the same time, they want things of this world. And then you get weak and you make excuses for your backsliding. If these people were truly righteous, they know that Angel Snap Number 7 is one of the best friends you ever gonna get. But you're not righteous. You're ratchet. And you're vulgar and you're nasty. You're self-righteous. And you're greedy. And you're pleasure seekers. You have no discipline. So of course, we're not gonna be friends very long. Because I'm real with mine. Even when I was a Christian, I was real with mine. Even when I was a Muslim, I was real with mine. You're just putting on a front. And you're not very good at it. We see who and what you are. If you really was righteous, any of you suckers, if you really was righteous, then you would recognize Angel Snuffin' Up 7 is your friend because in religious texts, it's all about the righteous versus the unrighteous. You don't have to believe in God to be righteous. Where does it say that at? So we are here tonight to talk about a blood sucker of the poor, this Sonetta, who is a tick, a parasite of the soul community. And I don't even think he's a real member of the soul community. He comes from the island somewhere. And I have nothing against those from the islands or Africa, but you are not a soul brother and sister. A soul brother and sister are those who are the descendants of slaves born in America, 
who suffered Jim Crow, the black codes, the descendants of Nat Turner, not no Johnny come latelys from an island to take advantage of the civil rights and the things that black American soul brothers and sisters, what we done, you come off of a boat and you benefit from our blood of, of our 300, 300, 400 years of blood, sweat, and tears. Even to this day, you don't do a damn thing. You sit back and you suck our blood. You're no different than the Asians or the, the new people that's going to come from Afghanistan or any of these other suckers that come in our neighborhoods. That's what these people from the islands do. Suck our blood. We're surrounded by blood suckers. So John Henry Clark says, you have no friends. What kind of friend are you sucking our blood? What do these people from the islands do for us? They are out for themselves. They're not supporting your schools. They're not supporting your businesses. They are out building little Haiti, little Somalia, little Jamaica. They're not trying to be part of you. I'm sick of this Pan-African garbage. These people are not interested in being with us. They are out for themselves. They should be coming here, being your brother and sister, and we build together. But they're not. They're out for themselves. And some of them come here just to leech off of us and take whatever they can back to Africa, back to Haiti, back to Jamaica, Barbados, or wherever they come from. Trinidad. Tobago, wherever they come from. So I can't get with this Pan-African stuff. Laurel says, if we would stick together, how are we going to stick together, Laurel? Because of people like you. You're a flip-flopper. And you are willing to stand with wrong. You're not just, you're not fair because somebody cry and get emotional. You're not asking them for any receipts. No kind of proof. They just cry. And you take the side of somebody that you've known for years and years and years. You're a flip-flop. He said, I wasn't a flip-flopper when I donated to you. When did you donate to me, Laurel? Three years ago? $20? You gave me $5? What the hell did you donate? You want to brag because you gave me $5? Give me your cash out. I said, show me whatever you sent me. I send, I send the shit right back to you. So what? You're a flip-flopper. You're a traitor. And I'm blocking your ass. Matter of fact, I can block you right now. I can block you right here. I don't want to hear from you no more. You're a flip-flopper. Block your ass. Got... I'm blocking this doctor person too, Dr. Murray. Talk about some calm down, sir. Blocked. Who, who else wants some? Who else wants some, y'all fake, you frauds? I know I wasn't mistaken. I saw him over there supporting their lies and their slander and their gossip. I know I wasn't mistaken. Then you bring your happy ass over here like nothing happened. I'm blocking you from my Facebook too. 
fake ass people. Anybody else want some out there listening? Bring your happy ass to the chat room, blocking your happy ass. Sick of it. This is the this is the purge. I don't give a damn if it's only 10 people left. I don't give a damn if, if it's just me and Talib left. All you suckers can go. Absolutely, Razzy. Flip floppers. Now, we've been talking about flip floppers, and then they're going to flip and flop. Knowing they done done it, I guess they believe nobody saw them or will see them. And here they come. What you what you coming over here for? Stay over there. Where they at? You a piece of garbage, just like the guy I'm going to talk about. Here we go. Got me. Other. That's that's three three blocks real quick. <laughs> three blocks real quick. Come on. Got a lot of more. Got a lot of more. <laughs> I got a lot of more. Come on. <laughs> now I'm going to talk about this creep, this Dominican parasite. How the hell? Now I know I blocked this this cat. Oh, I don't know. That must have been an old uh that must have been an old comment. But anyway, let's talk about this 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 creep. Let's talk about his comments first. Then I want to get more into some of his other into some of his other garbage. <clears throat> So you heard what this parasite had to say about me, Angel Nut Nut. Now, if you notice, now this is the first time I ever heard his words. Because he damn sure not making any videos about me because you're too damn scared. Got me another block. There we go. That's four blocks. Want some more? Come on, we got, got a lot of more. Got a lot of more. Four blocks. Let's go for 10. Come on, y'all out there in the listening audience. I know you want to be goofy. know you want to be silly too. Come on, put your happy ass in the chat room. Let's do this. Got four blocks in. Come on. <laughs> I love it. Can't even get started. Bam. Block. <laughs> right. <laughs> right, Razzy. Kill them. Kill them for me, uh, moderators. Take them out. Put them on time. Oh, let me know so I can block them because I don't think moderators can block. Let me know. They're not going to come back. Make you another channel. Take your lonely ass in your room and make your another channel. I already got him. I already blocked him. I blocked him earlier. That's five. I blocked, I blocked him earlier. <laughs> That's five. Got five more. Come on. Let's, let's go for ten. 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 <laughs> oh wow. No, that 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 uh that Malik Seven, he's a piece of trash Hebrew Israelite guy. He's a he's a, a woman hater. 
like most of those Hebrew Israelite guys are. Oh, I know they, they block you over there, so we can do the same thing. I know they block you brothers when you come over there. Oh, they coming, y'all. Here go number six. Block. <laughs> That's four more. Come on. Who's next? <laughs> four more. We'll be ten. Woo! Feeling good. I almost feel like I'm at the casino. <laughs> four more. Come on. The goal is ten. Ten, ten. All right. Let me see if I can talk about this. Uh, this parasite. Okay, you listen. Let me get a drink here. Now the sad thing. I should not be talking about this guy by myself. Sister Nova should be with me. We should be side by side. Now, what I notice is when Sonata and some of this other trash, when they find out Sister Nova was alone, they was not talking about her as long as we was together. Look, woo, Sister Nova. Oh, wow. Sister Noble, you got to look at this. As soon as they found out that Sister Noble and I had split, they started talking about Sister Noble. When we were together, and we were slamming them all the time, constantly. So none of them didn't say a damn thing. And the pa was crying like a damn baby. This is a fact. But now they know that there's a rift between me and Sister Noble. They start coming after her. And guess what? I hope Sister Noble is listening. Where your, where your people at? You got Sonata running his mouth again. You got Nepal running her mouth again. You got some of these other silly ass people running their mouth again about something that really should be dead and gone because we whooped their ass. Me and Sister Nova together kicked their ass. Sonata and Nepal or any of these other suckers. But now they angry and they see that there's a rift. Now they want to come after Sister Noble. And guess what? Where your boys at? Where Guy Nollywood Jr. at? Where Alquan at? Where Leah Muhammad at? Where Karen S at? Where's your people that got together to come against and talk about me? Where are all these suckers? to come and make videos and fire back at Sonetta and his crap. Where they at? Block number seven, three blocks. We at seven. We at seven blocks. <laughs> the deacon said, wow. <laughs> we got seven blocks. The goal is 10. Come on. We got 11 people listening, and I know we got some sucker, sucker trash in the, that's listening. Bring your happy ass to the chat room. Say what you got to say. Block so we can get this 10 block goal. The goal is 10 blocks. Three more. Come on. I want to ask Sister Noble, where is the Legion of Doom? 
Where's all these people that don't like each other, but they could get together and come on a panel to talk about Angel Snuff number seven? Where are they at? Why don't you gather everybody together and talk about Sonetta and Nepal and some of these other suckers that's talking about you? Because now, see, when we were together, you're strong. And you will be even more stronger because now we got the Dickens here that whoop ass. They are whoop ass experts. And so now we're learning how to avoid the copyright and all the other bull crap. What you going to do? What you going to do when the Dickens come for you? Bad boys, bad boys. What you going to do? What you going to do when they come for you? Making these great quality videos, making you look so stupid like the trash that you have become. So we listen to this creeper Sarnetta. What's his name? Mm. Mouth is dry. What is his name? Frank Gurry? What's up, Frank? Frank Gurry, Frank Gary, or whatever his damn name is. That's his stage name, Sonetta. That's his pretend name. As his name is. Your name is Frank, sir. Ain't no damn Sonetta on your driver's license. Frank. And let us be Frank. So you want to talk about Angel Snutting Up 7. But you ain't bold enough to talk about me, put my name in your video. Why don't you come after Angel Snuff Number Seven? You're not gonna do that. You don't have the balls. The only thing you're gonna do is go somewhere and hope that I never hear what you have to say. Coward, yellow belly. So he tells this guy who don't know me, his dumb ass is laughing. <laughs> See, that's ignorance. Here he is talking about somebody, and you don't even know me. He, <laughs> oh, that goes to show you how stupid that fella is. I think he's a Hebrew, is a, a dumb ass. Hebrew Israelite too. Somebody that was stalking and harassing Sister Noah. That Judah guy. Fake ass. I think that's who it was. Yeah, he's he spent 10 years in the in the crazy house. I'm not saying. I spent 10 years in the crazy house unjustly like a lot of black men like a lot of soul brothers it's soul brothers from the 1960s that should not be in jail right now political prisoners you laughing at them too and y'all suckers not doing nothing to help nobody get out of jail nobody out of prison out of middle institutions you're not doing nothing to help your people except send them a DVD or one of your bullshit ass papers or something. And you, this man has the nerve to talk about me being locked up. And to my knowledge, he's a damn ex-con. Aren't you an ex-con, uh, Gary? He's an ex-con. I think he did like five years. 
Four, five years? Did you do four or five years, Gary? Hell, that's half a ten. But see, you are an ex-con. You are a convicted felon. I'm not a felon. I'm not an ex-con. So you can look up my record. I'm not an ex-con. I'm not an ex a felon. You're a felon. And you also went to real prison. And the reason, one of the reasons why you put on this front like you really love polygamy. Woo, these people. The reason why a lot of these people pretend like they really in love with polygamy, a lot of them got punked out in prison. So you come out here when you get free and you pretend like you love women so much, I got to have one, two, three, four. You put on the front because you know that Big Bobo got in your backside. And you really want people to believe that you are 100% heterosexual, Gary. But see, you gave us a clue to your bisexuality, Gary. Why are you messing with Hassan Camel all the time? And you think that, that Hassan Campbell is bisexual or homosexual? And then he said that he believes that Sarah Sun Seti is homosexual. And he says that Sarah Sun Seti is a drunk. But you are in, if you think that Sarah Sun Seti is a homosexual, he was in your house, sir, along with you. What do that tell us about you, sir? You're not telling the whole story. That's why you want people to think that you love women so much because you got turned out. You are bisexual. You got turned out in prison. See, some folks don't recognize that. And you put on this front. I love women. Look at all the women. I got all these wives. You don't love none of them. You sneaking around and if you look and his activities, besides his polygamy supposed to be relationship, he's talking, but he's really socializing with men. He's not socializing with women. He's put on the front with these wives, but when you look at him, who he really socializes with and skin and grin with and have fun with, it's a bunch of men. Brother Ock, been in prison too, jail time. Reggie, Larry, all these hard legs. Where the women at, Sonetta? Because you're really not interested in no woman. A woman is just something for you to lay down with so you can make more men. You don't give a damn about Napasha Da or your wife. You don't even give a damn about your children unless they male. You've been in prison, you're bisexual, you got turned out. If you can make up stuff about me, I can make up stuff about you. How you like that? I was locked up 10 years in a mental institution because I was charged with a crime I did not do. And I was innocent like many brothers and sisters deal with the criminal justice system. But when you're dealing with people that you don't like, oh, there's a problem. These are the same people that talk about the school to prison pipeline. But then when a brother get caught up in the system, oh, he crazy, he was in the nut house. What about the, the school to prison pipeline? What about the 400 years, 300 years of injustice of these Pecker Woods throwing us in prisons and jails and mental institutions? 
all that goes out the window because you don't like Angel Snuff No. 7. And I ain't did a damn thing to you except challenge you're supposed to be wisdom. That's the only thing I ever do. Question your lies because that's what it is. It's a bunch of lies. And if you notice, everybody on YouTube, all these suckers on YouTube, all of a sudden they become psychologists and psychiatrists. Nobody has no degree degree in psychology or psychiatry. You, you crazy. So-and-so is crazy. Where's your degree? And even if you had a degree, psychology and psychiatry is a bogus discipline. It's a bogus science. The diagnostic symptom manual even tell you all this is based on theory. All these mental illnesses, because a, a mental illness in the United States might not be a mental illness in Africa. It might not be a mental illness in Europe. But see, COVID is a disease. And no matter where you go around the earth, that's what it is. But psychiatry is bogus. Psychiatry is a flip-flopper. Psychiatry is a flip-flopper. And we expose flip-floppers here. Razzy says, so brother ain't snuffed up saying, laying down the fire on all these ego maniacs on YouTube. Absolutely. We got to keep the fire under their fake ass. They fakes in their frauds. One of the reasons why we can't get no momentum, why we can't move, because you got a bunch of creeps, a bunch of ticks and parasites. Some damn worms like this Sinetta that's sucking our blood. And he's not a soul brother anyway. He's a tick that came from an island to suck our blood and take advantage of what we here have suffered and gained. Yes, it is. Then he goes on to say that I talked about raping Nepal. No, what I said since she's making herself so easy, maybe I should go get me some too. Had nothing to do with rape. If there was somebody out there giving away invoke tickets, I might as well go get me one too. They, they give, they're giving the invoke tickets away. Had nothing to do with rape. No, that's what that's what you wanted it to sound like. But anybody listening can tell that's not what I said at all. No, that's what you wanted to hear, which is a lie, because you're a liar. So, of course, you heard a lie, because you're a liar. You're a deceiver. You're a manipulator. Why didn't, why did, why did people let him say that? The people didn't say nothing, because I did not say nothing about raping no damn body. You damn goat-looking bastard. You chipmunk look like a smashed chipmunk. Loser ass. He remind me of that Anthony Miner Ross. They got the same kind of face. Frankenstein monster face. The only thing we got to do is put some bolts in your happy ass neck. And you are frightening. You are a monster. Telling lies. I didn't even hear Nepal said. He said he was going to rape me. Now you would think if anybody going to say that I, I said something about raping them, it would be Nepal. I did not hear Nepal make any video or any statement talking about he said he want to rape me. Damn liar. You, you're liars. And Sister Nova told me the same trash. I said, what is your problem? But see, her problem was she wants fame and fortune. 
And she didn't want to blow that. Because Sarnetta got this big platform. So she's going to sell her soul to the devil for a few pieces of silver. And then they turn around and stabbed her in the back. The same thing that I'm saying she done to me, they done to her first. They betrayed her. Woo! <laughs> Sarnetta said, I got it on tape. He's recording calls and, and you don't know that you've been recording. First of all, it's against the law in many states. But how many of you, if I was on the phone with you twin or Soul Brother 85 or Mellow or Razzy, if we was on the phone and you found out I was secretly recording our telephone calls, I know damn well y'all be posting all kinds of stuff about me. And I wouldn't blame you if you if you went out, try to find me and blow my damn brains out. That's some dirty. Why, Sonetta, Frank, Frankie, Frankie and Nappy, why are you recording the phone calls that you're getting from people? You stabbed Sister Noble in the back and you betrayed her trust. And you was disrespectful to her. That's the bottom line. Y'all some disgusting creeps. Cause you got a big platform. Your platform is built on lies and deceit and treachery. Parasitic behavior. You are opportunists. So Sister Noble got caught up in all that crap. And he he didn't even he did not even uh promote her book. She came on the platform one time, talked about the book, and that was the end. When we promote Sister Noble's book, every video we make, get this, get this book, God is on trial. That's promotion. He did not endorse the book. He did not promote the book. What he wanted to do was get Sister Noble on his slave plantation and maybe make a, a, a rivalry between her and the pa, get them to debating and, and beefing more entertainment for his slave plantation. That was the whole plan. They had no respect for her intelligence, no respect for, for the woman she was, none. Because they better, they smarter, they greater. Her scholarship is rinky dink. Bring your happy. I will take on the whole house of consciousness. Brother Aunt Reggie, Brother Bennett, whatever. I would take all of y'all, the whole platform at the same time. Y'all don't have nothing coming because all of it is bogus. All of it is pseudo. All of it is bogus information. All of it is fraud. Fantasy fiction and fairy tales. Truth mixed with falsehood. Feel good rhetoric. I blast you to pieces, all of you. You don't want a piece of me. You did Sister Noble like that. And I want to make something perfectly clear. Sonetta did not do anything for Sister Noble. Sister Noble made a video about that sister Alexis K. Tyler and that's what put her on the map and that's the only reason why they contacted Sister Noble because she was getting all this attention from her video about Alexis K. Tyler and then they used Sister Noble 
to get to Alexis K. Tyler. It was all a conspiracy. It was all fake, all a conspiracy. And I tried to tell Sister Noble, be careful, watch yourself. These folks can't be trusted. There's a reason they won't, they don't want you and I to be together so they can separate you away from me so they can do with you as they please because they know I know better that they're a bunch of creeps and you got to watch out for them. But she went and she trusted. She calling me a devil. No, you went and you trusted these devils and we told you that's what they, what they were. And they betrayed you. They recorded your phone calls. This man is talking about, you told him, I know how you talk and I know what you meant when you was telling him your vagina title, whatever. I heard you talk that kind of way before. But of course, he's not gonna tell the story that way. He's gonna blow it up to make you look like a hoe, make you look bad. That's what he did. And he's doing it right now, coming after you because now he sees that there's a separation. I'm going to make her pay for what she done. You didn't do a damn thing to him. They are the ones that betray you. And you cannot see that I'm going through the same thing with you, that you betrayed me and stabbed me in the back. But the difference is I gave to you. They didn't give you a damn thing. They just leached off of you for their own benefit and purpose. But you wouldn't listen. And now you've gone, and now Sister Noah has dropped down so low, she's reached out to a creep that asked her and asked me to do pornography. You don't see nothing wrong with that, sister. Can't you see you don't really drop low? Where is all your people at? Where is this Karen? Because she Karen was there when you was talking about this black son guy. Where's she at? Where's all these? Where are your friends? Where's all these buddies? Where's Aquan? God, where's all these folks at? They left you high and dry. Where is Aliyah Muhammad? Poor child. This is what happens to us when we disconnect from our power source. This is what happens to us when we disconnect from God. We are the God and you was part of the Godhood. And you decide, but you decided to turn your tail. And take some of the angels from God. Like the story in the Bible. Remember? Because remember the devil was an angel. And he decided to leave God. And he crooked his tail. And took some of the angels with him. And that's what Sister Nova done. Took some of the angels with her. When she left. God. Woo man. <laughs> Incredible. Incredible. And you forced me to go places I, I didn't want to go. And now your friend, the only friend you got is somebody want to get in your panties and want you on film screwing somebody. An amateur porn filmmaker, this black sign guy. And I know what, what he is because he contacted me. I had to block him from my phone talking that crazy stuff. Sent me some money. Uh, it's, it's more where that come from. Why don't you and Sister Nova make a porn? <laughs> and you're friends with this creep. And he looks all old and dried up now. Braids all dragging. He looks all woe out. 
That's what happened to you when you leave God. That's what happened when you leave righteous behavior, which he wasn't never righteous to begin with. With all his children and his women, he's a used up piece of toilet paper, and that's where you want to go. Instead of hanging on, you don't want to be with the new and the unique and the original and the strong and the righteous. You want to go to the garbage dump. I wonder, I wonder if this any good in the garbage dump. Hanging around the trash can. But that's what happened. The Quran said when you leave God, Allah makes you blind and you start wandering and confused when you would say you had order you had a plan you had a vision you had a goal you had a purpose now you wandering all oh, the pedophiles that's all you can talk about the pedophiles and the, the evil black men just wandering, creeping around. Your pastor would tell you that God is punishing you. That's what your pastor would tell you. God is punishing you for your rebellion because Angel Snub Number Seven, whether I believe in God or not, Angel Snub Number Seven represents righteous behavior. And if God was here, God would be with Angel Snub Number Seven. Whether the God be Jesus or Allah or Yahshua, Yahshua or whatever. God would be backing me up. And I was told from a Christian person. When Jesus returned, the first people to be judged is the ones who believe, not disbelieve, the ones who believe. I could be wrong. That's what I was told by a Christian person. The first ones to get judged is the believers. <laughs> this guy, Frankie, Frankie the Sonetta, whatever the hell is that, he got the nerve to try to talk about me. I'm right here, sir. He's too scared. To allow me on his program because none of his none of his bitches can handle me. Let me tell you something about Angel Snub Number Seven, and I'm not bragging. Okay, I'm not bragging. I was trained real well how to debate in high school. We was number two in our state, in the debate class. We was number two in debate. And then I went from debate in high school to the Nation of Islam, where I learned how to defend the teachings of Elijah Muhammad. And I learned how to be skillful in debate. But the ultimate class, woo! The ultimate classroom that Angel Snub Number Seven had to deal with in debate is the Department of Mental Health. Ten years of debating, ten years of fighting these peckerwoods who got high degrees on the wall, years and years of learning, years and years of mental manipulation and trickery. And I beat them. They told me I'll never get out without their permission. I beat them at their own game. You still be locked up. Frank Gary, you didn't get yourself out of prison. You had to do your damn time. You had to wait for them to let you out. 
I did my own paperwork. I'm a jailhouse lawyer. And not only did I get myself out, but unlike you, I help other people get out. How many people, Frank Gary, have you got out of jail or prison or a parking ticket? We ain't did a damn thing except take. You a big ass leech. Tariq Nasheed, Cynthia G, Hassan Campbell, The Advice Show, whoever these big platforms is, Tasha K. None of them gonna mess with me. That's because you're a nobody. No, it's not because I'm a nobody, because you know you don't have nothing coming. I'll, I'll, I'll be like Maurice. I will whoop your ass intellectually put us in the right environment for debate I ain't talking about this arguing back and forth all this corny stuff a real debate shut your damn mouth while I talk all this cutting people off and all this old silly stuff that these people all this I don't need no slides here you are having a debate. They got to get all these books and, 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 and notes and slides. I don't need all that. You don't never see me come here with all the screenshots and slides. First of all, I have confidence in my audience that you're not stupid. Why should I have all these slides and all this other stuff unless it's really necessary when I know that you already, you already know? I just want you to think with me. Use your brain. No, none of them could. I had O'Shea Jackson crying like a baby. D. Darrell crying like a baby. You can't do nothing with me in the right environment. Yeah, you can run your mouth when you can cut me off and all this other kind of store stuff. That's why these people are not going to play video. They're not going to play video tag with me because I tear their ass up because you can't cut me off. You can't disturb me. It's video, video. Whoop your ass. It's simple as that. That's why they're not going to play video tag with me. They know they don't have nothing coming. I will take on Napa and all you suckers at the House of Consciousness, all of you. There's only one person that was in the House of Consciousness that I have that I have respect for, and that's Natural Tahuti. And y'all see a clip when I talk to him. And he said, we know who you are. And he respect Angel Snup Nup Seven. He wasn't all arrogant. Matter of fact, in the clip, he said, that's why we need reality's temple on earth because something you know, or whatever that have gone wrong in the temple. He know who I am. Farrakhan, a lot of these people know who the hell I am. You think they don't know who I am. They know who I am. They heard of me. And some of them talk about me under their breath, like Tariq Nasheed. He's not going to come out here and go video by video. He's going to just say something slick on a video I probably would never hear. Like, like this creep. And they are failures. They don't want to do nothing for us as a people except line their damn pocket and make excuses for failure.
First of all, your scholarship and your knowledge should be free. Now, for my personal autobiography, I have the right to charge a fee. That's my personal, my personal life, my autobiography. I have the right to do that. But as far as sending a message to help us evolve, to help help guide us out of the situation that we're in, that knowledge, that understanding, that scholarship should be free. And really it is free, but most people are too damn lazy to go to the library or whatever and go look it up. Tariq Nasheed ain't saying nothing new. Umar Johnson ain't saying nothing new. Sanetta is not saying nothing new. Blah, blah, blah. It's old. Leftovers. It should be free. But they charge you. And they make you believe like they know something special. They're divine. They're not. You're lazy. So you latch on to them. And they make you feel good. And you pay for them like a prostitute to feel good. Sonetta is an intellectual prostitute. Give him the money, and he's a good hoe. Farrakhan is an intellectual prostitute. Give him some money, he pull his pants down. Here, here go the booty. Tariq Nasheed, Cynthia G, all these suckers on here, nothing but intellectual prostitutes. Give them some money, they give you some booty. Give you some ass. Highly paid prostitutes. Let me talk about this guy a little bit and get out of here. Y'all got some time because I'm looking at my notes. I'm still far away from where I need to go. Y'all got some time because I, I, I want to go through this real quick. This man is a piece of trash. He got thousands and thousands of people listening to him because they are naive. Some are naive. Some are ignorant. And unfortunately, a lot of them are pieces of trash too. They're pieces of trash. Nobody says all of them fakes and frauds. Sonetta, Farrakhan, Umar Johnson, Tariq, all of them are fakes and frauds. Hold on. All right, that's Talib calling in. Yeah, I'm crying. I was trying to get in and that stream taking two. Long to get in, plus it, it, the battery is at 72 charging. All right, anyway, all right, just I'm in the middle of this talk, just hang there. We'll get to you in a, in a minute, uh, to live. Right, you still wanted to cover that, yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. And I see what the title was about, uh, uh, uh hold on, you. huh? I see the title was yeah. about Sarnetta attacking you. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I got the, yeah, I got the. I was just listening to some stuff and ran into that. I'm like, he actually said my name. I'm like, what? <laughs> this guy got a lot of nerve. But I want to try to finish. I'm gonna turn the mic over. All right. But I got a little ways to go here, so be patient with me. Okay. All right. <laughs> to live in the house, y'all. They saying, hey, what's up, to live? Okay, let me put let me put this greeting so when you watch the video you can see everybody gave you greeting. Alright. Tell them I send my greetings too. Yeah, they hear you. Okay. On the speakerphone. 
I don't know what's so great about you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just a brother in the street. <laughs> 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 I'm just struggling like hell. Even with a brother just trying to get a damn education, that's a struggle. Yeah. <laughs> this man, this man to live so special. I gotta stop my whole live stream so y'all can say, hey, what's up to Lou? What's up, Eric? Hey to Lou. I gotta stop my live stream. Wow. <laughs> okay, you know, some people got it, some people don't. <laughs> Let me finish putting these, uh, yeah, because when you watch the video again, you can see that everybody was hollering at you. Okay. Make sure you see see the comments. <clears throat> see, I, I don't mind sharing the spotlight. You know, when Sister Noah was here, I didn't mind sharing the, the spotlight. I shared it with Ragged Ass Karen. <laughs> I don't mind sharing the spotlight. I'm not stingy or, or whatever. And see, that's the thing about it. Then these people turn around and, and they stab you in your back. Right. Nobody would know nothing about no Karen if it wasn't for me. Exactly. They really don't know the ones that got her off the ground. And we promoted her book. No, Nobody else was promoting her book. And then you turn around after what we done now you're going to turn around over some nonsense. Basically, that's what it was. Some nonsense. You're going to stab us in the back and, and turn on us like that? We gave to you. Alquan ain't gave you nothing. Aliyah Muhammad ain't gave you nothing. Guy in Gay Nollywood Jr., Cool Cool Cutter, all these suckers give you nothing. How you going to turn around? That's what I was asking. Uh, I couldn't understand about Craig. Craig, how are you going to turn your back on people who want to help you and build you for some suckers that gave you $40? I think that's all he got out of them suckers. He wanted to build a radio station or, or whatever. And, and, the, and the most money he got out of his Pat African friends was $40. That was it. But over here, we're trying to give you the whole thing. We actually want to build this thing. Here she is, turning her back on a platform that supports you a thousand percent. For some suckers, the only reason why they want to get with you so they think they can hurt me. And it didn't work. It all failed. But that's another story, and we talked about that already. We talking about this, this garbage uh, Sarnetta. <laughs> Sarnetta, you're bad from Reality's Temple. Yeah, he's a, a damn, he's a vomit eating freak. I told him uh, to live. He's making fun of me because I was locked up in a mental institution or whatever. I said, I'm like, you was in prison, sir. And who's to say that you didn't get turned out? Because all I see him him dealing with is a bunch of men, a bunch of hard legs all the time. Where the damn women at? I thought he was married. Yeah, he is. But you don't see him lovey dovey with his wife. You don't see him messing with women like that. He's always skinning and grinning with, with, with the boys, with the hard legs. He just used them women as a front. Like he was talking about me making up crap, talking about, I said I'm going to rape Nepal. Ain't nobody never said nothing about raping no ragged ass Nepal. The only thing Nepal got going for her is her big breast. I'm in the chat room, and that's all them guys in the chat room. Man, she sure got some big titties. Man, look at Nepal. Is she going to show them titties today? They don't give a damn about her scholarship. They don't give a damn about her knowledge. It's about her big breasts. I sure like to suck on one of them. 
grown ass men still hungry for bread. Didn't you get enough when you was a baby? Oh, excuse me. Most of y'all are Similac, Similac children. So y'all never had no woman's breast. That's why they go crazy over the woman's breast because they never had it. Their mama didn't even love you enough to give you her breast. She gave you a damn warmed up piece of plastic and some chemicals. And not only is Sonetta a, a convict, but chances are he's a drug addict too. He did crack, heroin, stuff like that too. You are no, he's not, you're not in no position to talk about me. I've never done drugs. I don't smoke, don't drink. Just got caught up in a situation like many brothers, brothers and sisters do in this racist ass nation. You piece of trash. Another, another New York sewer rat. Look like somebody smashed his face in. But anyway, let me get into this. Then I want to turn because I don't want to get too, too late. I want Brother Talib, he has something to, he wanted to bring us some news about the polite situation, which I'm going to talk about that too, because this garbage is, is part of the polite thing. And we want to talk about that real quick. Okay, so I came on the scene in 2007. There was no Tariq Nasheed. There was no Sarnetta. There was no Syrah Sumseti. There was no Young Pharaoh. All these people. There was no Cynthia G. There was, I was the G. It was me and a brother named t -Mont. There was a brother named J.T. Riley and a bunch of us. We was the ones. And, and King Noble, Black Supremacy. We was the ones. And Google tore down my channel. Tore down King Noble channel. And J.T. Riley won. If it wasn't for Google messing with people, I would be the one. My channel would be just as big as Sarnetta or Tariq or any of these other suckers. My channel was getting 3,000 subscribers a month. That's what my channel was getting. And I was talking, I was telling people, the hell with God, the hell with Jesus and Allah. Saying the same thing I'm saying right now, and I was getting 3,000 subscribers. Excuse me, I take that back. 300. I take that back. 300. I was getting 300 subscribers or more a month. Google is the one. Matter of fact, go look at some of my old videos, and you'll see the views in the hundreds. Google is stopping my views. Google is manipulating my views and, and and how people see my content. Because if you go look at some of my old videos, you will see my views in the hundreds. You think people just don't like Angel Snuff No. 7. The reason why I am still here is because people like Angel Snuff No. 7. You think, you think people don't like what I talk about. Yes, they do. It's a lot of us out here. They are manipulating YouTube. They are manipulating social media. So people can't hear us. They want them to hear Sonetta because he's a piece of trash. They want them to hear Firecon because they ain't going nowhere. They want them to hear all these other suckers because they taking you nowhere. So let me talk about this guy, because I don't want to get too late. I want to, I want to hear what our brother Talib want to bring to the table. So all these new guys start coming, 
on YouTube. And most of us welcome Sarnetta and Tariq Nasheed or whoever. We welcome them with open arms. Now, people like me from back in the day, there was no AdSense money. When you talk about crazy, this AdSense money have taken people who look like they really wanted to do something for the black community, soul community, they done sold, sold you out to make money. It's all about the money. At one time, it was just about the YouTube fame and the praise. Now it's about money. What people don't like about me is that I challenge your ideology. I challenge your beliefs. That's what they don't like about me. And I show you that you are in error. I show you the flaws. And I do not let you slide and just ignore. No, you need to talk about this. I'm not going to let you slide and ignore. You need to explain this. Because it's a lie. And you need to accept it as a lie. So stop talking about, I represent the truth. No, you are a liar. You believe in fairy tales. And Humpty Dumpty. And Snow White and the Negro Wars. Dwarfs. You believe in fake stuff. So stop talking about, I represent the truth. No, you are a liar. And that's what they don't like about me because I'm telling you your religion, your beliefs, your ideology. When you don't accept the fact and I'm showing you this is an error, this is a flaw, but you want to, you just want to keep going and just ignore it where you become a liar. You are a deceiver because this is information that you just ignore because if you put the information in there, it changes the conclusion. And you don't want to accept the conclusion because the conclusion is going to show you that your God is a damn lie. Your Kemet is a damn lie. Your Hebrew is like garbage is a lie. All of it is bogus, fairy tales, pseudo garbage. For children, for adults with childlike minds. And they don't want to hear that because they think they're grown. You're not. You're a child. Matter of fact, some of them even call themselves child of God. You're happy ass after 2,000 years, when the hell are you going to grow up? They never going to grow up. Still children of God. So Sonetta, his problem with me, he told Sister Noble, Angel Snub No. 7, talk about me. Angel Snub No. 7, talk about me. Why don't you come to Angel Snub No. 7 and why don't you talk to Angel Snub Nub? What the hell are you scared of? Because you know I'm going to destroy you and you don't want to face the fact that what you're teaching and what you're pushing is a road to nowhere that is garbage. We want to go back to when Sarnetta was talking about how come people, what are Hebrews? How come people didn't put that Angel Nut Nut in check talking about raping Nepal? First of all, they know I never said nothing about raping nobody. First of all. And second of all, why didn't your happy ass step up? When me and Sister Noble was banging on, on, on uh, Nepal, Nepal made a video, that poor woman was almost crying. We was putting so much pressure, putting so much fire under her ass. And you didn't do nothing with your punk ass. And I heard him tell somebody, some faceless person, tell me, you won't show your face. I show my face, Sonetta. I'm calling you a punk. You a little sissy. And you dumb. Your knowledge is bullshit. You flossing in your broke down ass bins, showing off in front of poor people. Because they're supposed to be amazed at your little ragged ass, used ass, pre-owned Mercedes Benz, well, Lexus, whatever the hell you driving. And the reason why you driving that, 
because you tricked and you manipulated naive and ignorant people. You didn't work for it. You ain't nothing but a professional ass beggar. You a beggar. You didn't earn nothing. The people gave you cash out, gave you money because they see that you are a bum. Let me help this bum out. Let me give him a little something, something. And this ingrate, this floozy, have taken all this money over these years and gave nothing back to Harlem. Gave nothing back to the people. The only thing he do is take. And then he goes and make videos I'm on vacation in Miami. This man buying tickets on your dime, going to see, what's that fighter's name? Uh, Merriweather, Floyd Merriweather? Yeah, Floyd Mayweather. Yeah, Mayweather. He's taking your money, taking his family to, to, to the Mayweather fight, going on vacation to Atlanta on y'all dime because he make you feel good. But see, I could do that. I know how silly a lot of y'all are. I know how to talk to make you feel good. But my conscience, see, I got a conscience. His conscience don't bother him. Young Pharaoh conscience don't bother him. Brother Polite conscience don't bother them. My conscience would bother me knowing I'm telling you a lie. But simply because it make you feel good, I'm going to take advantage of you. My conscience bothers me. I'm not going to do that. I'm not. I, I just can't do that. My uncle asked me to do that way back in the day. Open up a Christian church. He said, you don't have to believe. Just talk all that Jesus stuff the way you do, and let's make some money. That's not me. My conscience bothered me. I was at the uh, the Jehovah Witness Kingdom Hall. And one of the brothers, he was like, look at all these pretty sisters, Jehovah Witness. A lot of them not married. Brother, you can come here and you know, you can get one, you know, get you a good wife, get you a good, you know, sister. I said, I, 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 I can't be fake like that. I don't believe in God. I can't, I can't do that. I'm not going to go to the Jehovah Witness Hall just so I can get with a sister, so I can get in her panties, pretending that I love Jehovah. It's a damn lie. My conscience bothers me. But you got people. Pretending to be Christians, pretending to be Jehovah Witness, pretending to be Muslims, knowing damn way they don't believe a damn thing. They trying to please their wife, trying to please somebody, just trying to be something that they're not. I can't do it. So here we are. We have Sonetta. And when you first see Sonetta, he's on the street corner like a panhandler. Got his little table out there selling DVDs and books. He got this, got this poster or whatever it is in, in the background, stopping the brothers and sisters in Harlem, you know, giving them black conscious information. That's how he's, that's his and see, so they understand that we are we don't have an identity the so-called nigger in this country we suffer an identity crisis and so these people from the islands and whatever they understand that and they get on the hustle they don't give a damn about you it's the hustle how can i make some money and they see that these dvd remember there was a time not only black conscious dvds but you could sell bootleg movies. You could you could sell bootleg Envo records on the street. And 
Terry, Cindy, and Rona don't get a dime. DVDs and CDs. These ladies don't get a dime. So here you you got Sonetta on the streets doing all this black supposed to be black conscious garbage. He's selling books. He's got DVDs. And the people that write the books, or rather the DVDs and the tapes, these bootlegs, he's not giving them a dime. Our brother Omar Shabazz got a very popular bootleg of one of his films that they like to sell on the street. And Sarnetta didn't give Omar Shabazz a dime. I saw people on Facebook selling Omar Shabazz films bootleg. He's not getting a dime. But that's how Sonetta first got started. By selling bootleg DVDs and CDs and probably some uh, Black Power books they, they stole from somewhere. They stole from somewhere. But that's how he, that's his come up. Okay, now we got to applaud. Don't hate the player, hate the game. That's a don't hate on the man's hustle. And he was good at it. And so he went from, now you got to give something out of his credit. Because he went from doing that and came up with the idea of these debates. And he started, once, once he got on YouTube, because he has no knowledge, nobody really give a damn about what he's talking about. So he was wise and smart enough. Let me bring all these guys with all this different stuff together. And it worked. And he called himself the Don King of Black Conscience. Now we know Don King is known to be a leech and a hustler, a thief of these boxers. They say he ripped off Muhammad Ali, he ripped off Mike Tyson, he ripped off Evander Holyfield, Don King of boxing. And that's the same thing that Sonetta was doing. Somebody made a video and they just did the numbers. And they saw the kind of money that Sonetta was making off of these debates. And he was giving Sarah Sun Seti, Young Pharaoh, and all these people involved in these debates, he was giving them chump change compared to what he was really making. And they are the reason why he was making all this money. Next thing you know, he's buying, he's buying a, 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 a used-ass Lexus, Mercedes-Benz, whatever the hell that car is. Next thing you know, he's talking about buying property. You got to give this man his credit. You got to give him his credit for the hustle. But see, just like Muhammad Ali, just like Mike Tyson, and a lot of those other boxers, they got hip to the hustle. And actually, Don King really is lucky to be alive. Is, is Brother Talib, is Don King still alive? Uh, uh, <laughs> yes. Okay. Because really, Don King, actually, lucky he's still alive because the way he ripped off some of these guys, I'm shocked somebody blow his brains out. But they want that money. They want that money. That's what it's all about. Money, booty, praise, fame, and fortune. They want to try to compare themselves to the white man. Look what I got. You can't compare your little garbage to the white man. The white man owned nuclear power plants, gas companies, oil companies, real money. 
that make billions of trillions of dollars a year. You can put all these Negro black businesses together and they don't add up to one of these oil companies make every year. But you want to be like your master so bad. Okay. So Sarasum said it and young Pharaoh, brother polite, all of them got hip to the game because they, they understood they was the money makers and they want their share. And so, you know, there was a falling out between him and polite Sarasum said it and young Pharaoh. He got real, real angry and upset. I mean, really, really angry and upset. And he, he let the, the only thing he had to do is give those brothers, you know, break them off a little something. And he could probably still be making some, some better money right now. He put all his guys together, the new house of consciousness, without polite, Seti and young Pharaoh. And the people didn't come to the debate. And he brought all his guys. They were the show. They was the ones people wanted to see. And now Polite do his own thing. Sarasun Seti always was doing his own thing anyway. And of course, young Pharaoh did his own thing. And I think Umar Johnson passed through the House of Consciousness too. And of course, Umar Johnson doing his own thing. Now, this is the thing. And I just learned this not too long ago because I don't know what the hell Frank Gurry, Gary, whatever his damn name is, Sonetta, I don't know what he represents. But he claimed to be a black, a black Panther. I saw him with a picture of Farrakhan. And I think he took a picture with uh, Khalid Muhammad back in the day. He said he was part of the Black Panther. Okay? Now, the thing about that is this. How can you be under somebody like Khalid Muhammad? Now, mind you. I was around Khalid Muhammad way before Sarnetta. I was around Khalid Muhammad when he was Harold X, temple number 27 in California. I was driving trucks and I used to go to California every other week or whatever. And he was the minister, temple number 27 in California. And he wasn't even Khalid Muhammad. He was Harold X at the time. Now, I really don't know. I never got that close to Brother Khaled, but I knew I used to hear him teach when I used to go back and forth to California. And he was the minister, Temple Number 27. But how can you be around Khaled Muhammad? And mind you, Khaled Muhammad was Nation of Islam with Farrakhan. And Khalid Muhammad was Nation of Islam when he went to help the Black Panther Party. He never stopped being Nation of Islam. He took his Nation of Islam from Farrakhan to the Black Panther Party. We see the image. We see the video. We see how Khalid Muhammad carried himself. So how can you be under somebody like Khalid Muhammad, Frank, and you turn into a damn hustler, a Don King. Khalid Muhammad was not a hustler. He was not a Don King. He did not look at the, uh, the, the, uh, the struggle as edutainment. It was real for him. So how can you be under a great man like Khalid Muhammad and look what you are today. A nasty talking, whoremonging, 
bisexual, DVD selling, crooked teeth ass Negro. A big ass leech in the community. Colin Kyle, Kyle Muhammad was not a leech. Colin Muhammad was working in order Oh wow. I gotta stop because I got number nine. We, no, this is number eight, I think. Okay, Ebony. This this is that Ebony four four thirty-three person. You said that Guy Nollywood Jr. was cute, and you slammed me over there on Sister Nova's channel. I sent Soul Brother 85. The screenshots. You a flip flopper. You stabbed us in the back. You didn't miss a damn thing. How the hell? Yeah, you. How the hell you miss us? We got the screenshots. I sent the screenshots to to the deacon. You was over there talking about me like a dog, and you was calling. Gay Nollywood Jr. Tell me how cute he was. What is cute about Guy Nollywood Jr.? A flip flopper. Take your flip flopping ass back over there to the, to the dungeon, to the back cave where you come from. Well, twin, one of the dickens give you a opportunity to, to apologize she talked about me real bad we got the screenshots well she can apologize on another day because she she's blocked that's number eight that's number eight if you saw those screenshots you know something's you know what those people kept coming back having technical difficulties that's why some of those people kept coming back take your happy ass back over there with sister noble she needs your help because these people are talking about her and all her gang is gone ain't heard nothing from that rag ass karen chick Be gone. So that's number eight. We got 12 listening. And I know some of you that's listening. You just here to be nosy. A lot of you don't like Angel Snap number seven. Bring your happy ass into the chat room because my goal, I want 10 blocks tonight. We up to number eight. She got a lot of nerve. Yeah, we got the receipts. So brother 85, I sent him the screenshot. So he didn't even have to go look it up himself. I sent him the screenshots. Deacon so brother 85 got the receipts. I'm not going to do anything. I'm not going to say anything. And I can't back myself up. You know what you did, Ebony. I know what, we, what you did. Get the hell out of here. I don't need your creepy ass around here. Bye. Can't stop you from listening to the video. I don't want to see your happy ass comment. Make, make another channel and be nice or something. But Ebony, this channel not coming here no more. Talk about she missed us guys. Was you missing us when you was over there with Sister Noble? And they was calling me a pedophile? Child molester? Mentally crazy? And you said I need to go to jail? All that crap that you was talking? Get the hell out of here. Not tonight. I'm like Bernie Mac. Not tonight. <laughs> 
let me hurry up and finish this so I can bring uh Talib on. Yeah, hey guys. Yeah, she's coming over here because she know she know what she done what she was what she done. Hey guys, I, I miss you. Get your goofy ass out of out of here. Yeah. <laughs> I miss I miss you. You ain't miss no damn body. Go over there with 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 Gay Nollywood Jr. Kiss his ass. Okay. So how can you be under somebody like Khalid Muhammad? And you're nothing but a, a hustler. Colin Muhammad was not a hustler. And Colin Muhammad stood up for the community, fight for the community, and try to give back to the community if he could. The only thing you have ever done on YouTube is take. And you use Colin Muhammad's name so you can trick people to make them think that you that you're something like him. You're nothing like Khalid Muhammad. You're not a freedom fighter. You're not a revolutionary. You're just a damn pimp. You're just a hustler. A leech, a devil, as they say in religion. A deceiver in the soul community. Telling a lie. I mean, just telling an outright lie. He said he gonna rape Nepal. The video is up. Matter of fact, the video is up more than one time. You can go listen to the video yourself. Nobody talking about saying nothing about raping no damn body. Just liars. And if you notice about a lot of these folks, because I tell them, I will pay for the lie detector test. Nobody takes me up on the lie detector test. You cannot use it in a court of law, but it is still acceptable in the court of public opinion when the, when you get the results from the lie detector test and they say that you are that you telling a damn lie. And I already know they're not gonna take a lie detector test because they already know. I'll be happy. You pay for it, tell me where I need to go. I'll take my happy ass, I will spend my gas and my time and go take that test. And when it's all said and done, he passed with flying colors. I have no reason to lie. Now, the heat is on Sinetta right now because of this polite thing. Now, when polite was making all that money for him and getting all those views, no big deal. Matter of fact, even after they fell out, he made up with Polite because he understood the money, the views that Polite could bring to his platform. He's not gonna turn that, he's not gonna turn that down. Young Pharaoh never came back to him. Son uh Sarasun said he never came back to him. But see, Polite and him, they got to understand it. We're going to creep together. You're not going to tell me that this man did not know that Polite was a scammer. You're not going to tell me that this man didn't have no idea that this man was a possible pedophile. Matter of fact, when he got angry, he even let Polite know, I got some stuff on you. I got some stuff on you. Yes, you do. You know. But you're not going to open your mouth because Polite is making money for you. Because that's, that's the only thing you're about. Making money. Filling your pockets. Trying to be white. I told you this was nothing but white people and dark skin. He's nothing but Polite is a white man. Sanetta is a white man. Aliyah Muhammad is a white woman. I told you the, all these blackity black, pan-African suckers, 
They're nothing but Caucasian people. They're nothing but Europeans in disguise. That's all they are. You take the skin away from them and take the black out of their language, you get white. Pure European because that's all we know. They want you to they want you to make a they want us they want you and me to think that they are different. I'm black and black. No, you are a sambo. You are a coon just like all, like all of us are. When the cracker said call us a coon, he means all of us. When he says sambo, he means all of us. When the racist cracker said nigga, he means all of us. There is no category. Well, Sarnell is not a coon because he because he's pro black. Gay Nollywood is a Pan African. He's not a coon. That ain't how it work. So y'all live in delusional land, fantasy land. Tariq Nasheed lives in La La Land. And here's here's a guy that's supposed to know the black history so much. Then you should know that when you say call another soul brother and sister, black man and woman, a coon or sambo, you know that's a ra that's, that comes from races, and he's talking about all of you, including your happy ass, Tariq. So polite is in trouble with this, with these charges, and I heard, and Talib is going to talk about that a little bit. I heard that he's in jail with, without bail right now. That's what I heard through the grapevine. Uh, I'm, I'm going to uh, correct that, but go ahead. That's okay. But anyway, now that Polite is in trouble and got all this negative stuff on him, now Sonetta is pulling out. He going to leave his partner out to dry. And then the sad thing about it is that he don't give a damn about Polite because he know Polite can't say nothing about the case. And he wants Polite to come on his platform and talk about the charges. Now, you a criminal. You an ex-con. You know damn well Polite cannot come on your platform and talk about the case because anything you say may be held against you in a court of law. You know better. You a damn ex-con. But that goes to show you that the old saying is true. There's no honor among thieves. There's no honor among thieves. So Polite is throwing rocks at Sarnetta. Sarnetta is throwing rocks at Polite. And everybody is throwing rocks at Polite and Sarnetta because everybody know they was partners, scamming people, lying, and ripping people off. Everybody know, know that they was partners. Sonetta is a flip-flopper. Not too long ago. Now, I don't even really watch Sonetta. But I do remember when Sonetta said that he had AIDS. Sonetta said he had HIV. I remember that. And then somebody told him he had AIDS. Now he's talking about, I don't have no AIDS. A brother found the video where he said, I got AIDS. I, got, I might have HIV. I got AIDS. He's a flip flop. These people are liars. Do you or do you don't, sir, have HIV? And then you didn't tell Napa. And your new your wives that you got this HIV. It's a, it's an all messed up situation. And then he goes back and forth with Hassan Campbell, and they get to the point where they almost you might think they might want to kill each other. Then they become cordial. And I remember, like I told you, I really don't watch Sarnetta, but I remember Sarnetta said, I'm not going to mess with Hassan Campbell no more. But then something happened, and everybody was talking about Hassan Campbell, and then he, he came back. He's a flip-flopper because it's money. 
and he want those views from talking about Hassan Campbell. He's a flip flopper. So what everybody have in common is they flip floppers. Now the last con the last point I want to make, I'm gonna turn the, the mic over to, to Brother Talib. Our friendly neighborhood troll, Alquan, said that I defend Sarnetta. I've never defended Sarnetta. And I have no problem with nobody. I challenge your ideology. It's nothing personal. I challenge your ideology, your beliefs. No more, no less. I do not talk about Sarnetta's dog. I don't talk about his wife, his children. I don't talk about Gay Nollywood's wife and children and his cat with that wrapper, that necklace around his neck. I talk about your Pan-Africanism ideology and what you're supposed to be doing. You claim you got the scholarship, you know what to do, But ain't nothing to get done. And then you get angry because somebody like me is putting you out on front street because you talking all this crap. You got the knowledge. You got the wisdom and understanding. Your knowledge, your scholarship, your wisdom is supposed to inspire the people, motivate them to the point where now you give them the vision and the plan in order so that they can achieve true liberation and true freedom. But right now, to this day, the black man and woman, soul brothers and sisters in this country, suffer identity crisis. And you have no, Sarnetta offers no plan. He has no vision. He offers no answers to the problems. The Nation of Islam claimed to have answers to the problems, but Farcon been around for 40 years and the problem is still here. Nowhere close to being solved. The Pan Africans, the Moor Science Temple, all these suckers been around all this time and the problem's still here. Nowhere close to being solved. How dare you? How dare you try to make mockery of Operation Exodus Mississippi when you never tried it? So you don't know whether or not the plan, the vision can work or not. But we do know that whatever y'all doing, it ain't working. And they get angry because somebody like me, I'm not going to accept your excuses. Well, brother, we... Uh, if we had this, uh, you, you got plenty of money, you got plenty of help, it ain't working. It's like trying to put a square peg in a round hole. It just don't work. And they don't want to hear that. And they want to keep making excuses for failure. But what I want to say about Alquan, Alquan said that I, I defended or defend Sarnetta Because I think he'll give me a chance to be on his platform. Well, actually, actually, I'll be doing him a favor to come on his platform. His platform have nothing to offer me. The same old loser, feel good. And what the hell is Sarnetta? He's supposed to be a commit. What the hell is a comedic Hebrew? What is that? What, is, what the hell is a comedic Hebrew Israelite? A comedic Israelite. They make up new garbage all the time. What the hell is that, Sonetta? I challenge you. You can come to my platform. Ain't no such thing. What y'all make? This, they make up garbage day by day. But Aquan got angry. Because he calls Sarnetta 
an agent or a spy. Aquan caller. Now, first of all, you a faceless piece of shit, a troll hiding behind an avatar. How the hell you got the nerve to call somebody Asian? Who the hell, what the hell are you? You're not an Asian? How we know you're not an Asian? Run around here, oh, we are Aboriginal. We, we ain't no damn Aboriginal either, sir. You wasn't born on no reservation. You're not connected to no Aboriginal nothing. You a damn liar and live in fantasy world just like they do. But I told Alquan the reason why he should shut up calling people agents and spies because you can't prove it. You cannot prove that Sonetta worked for the FBI or the CIA or some type of intelligence agency. That's what I was saying. If I ever call Sonetta an agent, he's an agent. I can show you he has a connection to the CIA, to the New York Police Department or something. The only thing you do is run around, he's an agent, because really, Alquan want to be like Sonetta. He want a lot of people listening to him. He wants to have personality. He wants to have charisma. He wants to have the articulation. He wants to be like Sonetta. He wants to be like Tariq. He wants to be like all these people he stalk and harass. Now, I don't have all that. But I guess what make what, what attract me to me to him, I guess because simply because I'm a cool guy. <laughs> I guess I don't know. <laughs> he can't stay away. But recently, I guess he got tired of me blocking all his channels. Alquan haven't been around here for a while. And stay the hell away from me. Why are you bothering me? Why are you bothering us? Do your thizzy. Go out there and keep calling Sonetta a spy and an agent. And you can't show nobody connected to the CIA or the FBI or New York Police Department, Philadelphia Police Department. You can't prove none of that. You just run in your damn mouth. If you're going to call somebody an agent or a spy, prove it. That's all I say. You're just as much of an agent and a spy as, as they are, as far as they're concerned. Oh, because you're so blackity black. But you brag about sleeping with Italian women. But you're so blackity black. But you don't even live in the black neighborhood. You live around the cracker, the peck of wood. You so blackity black. You don't do nothing to help black people except run your damn mouth. When was the last time you bailed a, a person out of jail? Bought somebody, a black man or woman some food. What do the hell do you do? You faceless piece of garbage. And he gave me one dollar. Think it was funny for my for my uh, hospital fund. He think it's funny. Everything to him is a joke. It's funny. Block your ass. You stay the hell away from me. You a piece of garbage. Go over there with all them silly idiots that's listening to you. With your whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, let me speak your language. Cause you are you are Aboriginal. Hey yeah, yeah, no, hey no, mom. Hey yo, no, 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 show mama la la la. That's that's the language he understands. What did I say, Alquan? You understand that? Because that's that's Aboriginal talk. <laughs> dumb ass stuff. You a nigga. You a negro. Ain't no damn original my ass. You original. You an original ass. That's what you are. Yeah, and always, yeah, that's another thing. Always slurping and licking on something. What the hell is your problem? No, for real. 
Maybe he might be sleeping on the old dingle. <laughs> yeah. That, that's not normal behavior. Every time he make a video, he got what the hell? What's up with that? Hell, I've been on this video on his live stream two and a half hours and I probably picked up my bottle of water maybe three or four times. This guy, yep, slap, slip, slap, slap. What the hell? I don't know. He's probably a bisexual. He probably, he probably, he probably licked Dingaling and, and Cootie Cat. And he probably do a little booty hole too. He, he don't have, he, he ain't no shame in Alkaline Gang. <laughs> Like it ain't no shame in, in, in Sonetta. I can guarantee you, Sonetta lick booty, putty tap, and he like to get his penis sucked on. He's a freak. I can guarantee you, they, they all freaks, nasty and filthy. Black conscious freakazoids. <laughs> When you see Sarnetta's TV, I mean, when you see Sarnetta's teeth and they look brown, it, it ain't always coffee. <laughs> don't don't blame don't blame the brown stain on coffee. It ain't, it ain't coffee, y'all. <laughs> Go ahead, Talib. Do your do your thing. Oh, yes, brothers and sisters. Uh, yes, thanks, brother, for letting me on this panel this tonight. Uh, yes, uh, well, I, I have to break down the news to you. Uh, I heard from the African Diaspora channel tonight, hosted by brother uh, Bill Scott mm -hmm. and a sister who was actually at the court hearing in Miami, Florida, in Dade County. Okay. When uh, they say that like today was supposed to actually appear, you know, because it was a, a bond hearing which they were talking about up in his bond because of the fact that they upgraded the charges against uh -huh. him. And now he's out on the $10,000 bond, but they're talking about up in his bond because, like I said, once again, of the updated charges, felony charges, and uh, talking about like uh, second degree and third degree. Mm -hmm. Where they saying that the second deg degree could carry twenty five, and the uh, if you get found guilty, the third degree could carry like uh, fifty years. And because of the fact that the sister was a uh, is a thing, I think if they they saying that because the sister was a minor, they saying that it was something else that he could get one year for us all together. They was basically saying he could get like. 81 years in the penitentiary. Uh -huh. You know, if he's found guilty on all accounts, well, he did not appear in court today, nor did he appear in court through Zoom. Uh -huh. So his lawyer and them had to, uh, you know, get with the judge to reschedule the trial date, the, the court date again. But, uh, this is what he's facing, and he's on social media running his mouth, according to Brother Phil Scott mm -hmm. of the African Diaspora Channel. You know, uh, call, trying to call out YouTubers and all, all that kind of stuff, threatening YouTubers yeah. and talking about who he going to sue and stuff. But like Phil Scott say, you need to be... You better sue the white folks because you got them on there too reporting this case. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, uh, and, and, and with that said, uh, that uh, Polite is facing a big serious situation. 81 years in a penitentiary. Mm. Florida ain't no joke. Mm -hmm. The state of Florida is not no joke. I did time in the state of Georgia, brother. Mm -hmm. Florida is definitely even worse. Florida is always worse. Florida is not no joke. And you know, them states, they right next to each other. Right. You see what I'm saying? So, yeah, but you know, Florida, my 
In fact, when I was uh, doing time in Georgia, we knew sorry because I was locked up in the penitentiary right next to Jacksonville. Well, we always get the radio station out of Jacksonville, right? And they were talking about, uh, you know, actually at that time, this was like back in the late 90s, where they had uh, implemented a law in the Florida where you do 85% of your time because prior to that, they was on good time and all that stuff, you know. But now, they got to do 85% of their time. And it's been like that. So basically, it's like the Fed joint where you got to do 85% of your time. So if you get locked up in the system, especially with that kind of time, you're going to just about have to wear all that time. Mm -hmm. So, uh... Uh, life is in a serious situation right now. And you could go to the brothers, uh, the African Dive Sports Channel, or uh, Bill Scott, who reported on it, yeah. along with the sister that that that, that was on, on their live too, that, that had attended court hearing, mm -hmm. you know, and you could get all the information from there, you know what I'm saying? But basically, like I said, just to run it down, you know, it's a uh, He's facing a serious situation, and, and, and with the fact that, and, and like you said, he's on there twiddling his fingers, playing with these crackers. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. On social media, you know what I'm saying? He's playing a serious game. You know, they talking about increasing his bond. Yeah. And, and, and putting other restri stipulation restrictions on him, like where he got to stay a certain distance away from the accuser, right? And all this kind of stuff. So I mean, he's in a serious situation, and uh, you know, um, like uh, Brother Phil, you know, piggybacking off of Brother Phil Scott had to say about it. You know, these are the type of people that the black community tolerate, that this conscious community tolerate. You yeah. know, yeah. I mean, got, like you said, back in the day, it would have been different dealing with people like that. Mm -hmm. You know, accused of crimes like that in the black community. It would have been a whole different story. But, you, you know, they just show you how weak we have became as a community. How really weak we have became. Uh -huh. You know, uh, it, it's, it, it's no, uh, you know, it's no repercussions. You know, and then, you know, get on there. You know, we, we, we sound like we haters, you know, with people like this. And we, you, you know, all we doing is teaching the truth. Right. We talking the truth about this situation. You know, we're not, we, you know, we're not talking about, this is not, matter of fact, let's, let's forget about his ideology. Let's just talk about the fact that he is accused mm -hmm. of, of, of uh, you know, being a pedophile. Right. And now the criminal courts is at him in Florida over this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I mean, you know, and we 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 not gonna you know we not gonna make no public opinion judgment uh, from this platform until we know in fact for sure that he is actually guilty since he's yeah. not been found either whether whether he's not been found whether he's been found guilty or innocent yet. You see what I'm saying? Right. It's just the trial process that's taking place. And like I said, with this bond hearing going on, uh, with them raising up his bond, talking about raising his bond up, hey, his, I mean, you know, like I said, it's a serious situation he's facing. Yeah. And, uh, you know, but we want to get on here, you know, and still you know, look up to people like this because we can, we, we, we got to remember he was also accused in California mm. of something similar. Mm -hmm. Although that I don't know what 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 with that situation, but we never heard about that situation. But he was accused of something similar of some type of kind of assault or sexual assault. But like I said, it was never uh, it never made it to the courts. See, we forget, we quick to forget little stuff like that, right? You know, and, and we got to understand that this guy also comes from a uh, doctrinal construct called the Wabic teachings, the Wabian teachings, which was once taught by Dr. Malakazi York, 
who was a convicted child molester, serving 135 years in the Supermax Federal Penitentiary out of Florence, Colorado. So, I mean, you know, you have to understand where these people coming from. You got to look at the patterns or the backgrounds that they come from. Yeah. See what I'm saying? Now, I know there are many of you, or some of you out there, so you even said, well, you can't judge based that brother's situation or life on Dr. Malakazi York. You got to understand he was influenced by Malakazi York through the teachings. Mm-hmm. Okay? And if you look at Malakazi York's teachings, okay, which has been exposed for years, being mixed up with a bunch of, uh, you know, uh, mysticisms, uh, you know, fairy tale, cartoon, cosmic type, fake ass information, you know, uh, talking about spaceships, books showing penis phalluses and stuff, and, 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 and photo clips of homosexuals all hugged up and stuff on each other and all that kind of stuff there. And now, you know, because at one time he opposed homosexuality mm-hmm. in his teachings under the Islamic banner, which was which his teach which his group was known as the Ansarla community. Uh, you know, slash the Islamic Hebrew mission. You see what I'm saying? But mm-hmm. yeah, he at the time condemned homosexuality condemned stuff like that he called that the spirit of the devil even in the old books he put out back in the 80s as far as back then in them teachings you know and and, 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 and so i mean then he decided that he it was all right to allow homosexuals to become a part of his organization now they from my understanding of from my ex Luke Bobby, who I seen the video uh, made by, who was talking about, uh, you know, I forget this brother, I forget his page, but he, I think he's based out of Charlotte, North Carolina. But anyway, the brother was talking about, um, you know, how now they're known as the Sabians, mm-hmm. and how, how they have uh, have more homosexuals because that their ideology now is uh, which been uh, mixed into their ideology I- ideology is that the first uh, guardian angels were homosexuals back in the in the garden in Africa uh-huh. yeah so that's what that 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 ideology is that part of the ideology now is based on and that's why they're more accepting of homosexuals into their organization. So I mean, I mean, talking about flip floppers, huh. they, they, they go one great prime example of it. You, you know what I'm saying? Right. So I mean, uh, this is the construct that uh, polite comes from. And you got to remember, he was one of he was, from my understanding. One of uh, the top students right up under Dr. Malachi York. Hmm. Because, you know, Dr. Malachi C. York, just like any other group, organization didn't just allow anybody in his immediate circle. You see what I'm saying? Right. So it has already been circulating around for some time that Polite was a part of his uh, immediate circle to some degree. You see what I'm saying? which is why he was able to, you know, uh, write a lot of books and articulate certain things in a similar way like Dr. Malakazi York did. Mm-hmm. Do, do, do under the opposites as well as far as kind of people like he was talking about earlier. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So, I mean, you know, uh, this is the construct that polite comes from. You see what I'm saying? So, uh, we cannot uh, rule out anything. Now, like I said, we know that he's not been found either innocent 
nor has he been found guilty because his his uh, uh, legal woes is just beginning now. Right. But like I said, as time goes on and the truth comes out, and if in fact he is guilty, it wouldn't be no surprise. I'm gonna just leave it at that. Yeah. Uh, so whether he is guilty or not. You know, I'm going to just leave it at that on that note. But, you know, like I said, though, this is the construct that he comes from. <laughs> so we, 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 can't, we can't rule out anything in this situation. So we got to think we're clear, calm, cool, collective heads. We can't get emotional over this either. Mm-hmm. And that's even a message to those of you that support and like this guy, polite. You have to be fair in judgment. You have to be, you know, you have to be impartial about this situation because these are some heavy charges that's weighing against this guy. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Like I say, you could go to the Brothers or uh, African Diaspora channel. Uh, is posted. The video has already been done by now. It was done a couple hours ago, about a couple hours ago, as I was getting on the bus on the way home, you know. Mm-hmm. And like I said, man, you know, he, um, this guy, man, you know, uh, Bill Scott, <laughs> and the person, that the, the, the sister that said she was at the courthouse, you know, when he missed his court date. And, and they was even saying, why is he, the judge even, according to her, the judge was like, why is he not in court today? Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? So what is going on? I mean that 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 opens up another door for another door open questions. You see what I'm saying? He knew he was supposed to be in the court today for this bond hearing, but he wasn't there. He knew he wasn't even there through the Zoom. You know, sometimes you can't make it in person. You just go through Zoom. You know, right? He didn't, he didn't even go to to Zoom. He didn't even make his appearance in court through Zoom. So, I mean, and, and through Zoom, they just ain't going to walk up in there and handcuff you. You know what I'm saying? The, the judge wants you to be, uh, 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 you know, put in custody. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, uh, you know, uh, if, they, if they were, you know, in, in Zoom court, it's kind of different where they just can't, like I say, reprimand you. You know, so I mean, you you know, uh, <laughs> you, you 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 know, they just can't reprimand you like that. Although in the actual court they can, but Zoom court is a little different. So for him not to appear in Zoom court, where they just can't simply reprimand him at, if that's what they want to do to him, what does that tell you about polite? In his character, and when it comes to him, uh, you know, facing his accountability. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So we got to look at all that. We got to either take that into questioning. You know what I'm saying? Especially with these heavy charges that is going against him. Yeah. You know? This man, he talking about charges where he could be facing 81 years in the penitentiary. Mm. And like I said, Florida is not no joke. That's one southern state. That's not no joke. They kill you. They kill you in the penitentiary now. Mm. I've seen videos where inmates was able to get in such cell phones in there, and, and, and video record guards actually killing inmates, like in this one Florida prison, and throughout the state of Florida. They, they, they don't have no, you you know, they don't have no, the Florida, you know, it's been a, a lot, it's been quite a bit of past few years up to now. It's been a lot of, uh, you know, accounts in the media, in social media, where it's been inmates getting killed by uh, prison administration officials in the prisons down there in Florida. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you know, Florida, you know, you, you, you don't want to, and, and especially with them type of charges he's dealing with, he, he might, you know, before the guards even get to him, the inmates will have him for dinner, you know? Hmm. 
Yeah, you know, so uh, like I said, uh, you know, he, uh, <laughs> you know, he need, he need, he really needs to, uh, you know what I'm saying, uh, understand that, uh, you know, uh, this is not no game. Right. You know? Well, you, you, you know, 100 years, that's, that, that's, that's, that's barely, that's less than 20 years or uh, uh, close to a century. <laughs> You know, which you might not, which of course you ain't gonna need to even live to see all of it. You no. see what I'm saying? So, I mean, you, you play up the fire for real. And, and, and uh, that's why I don't, this is the reason why, you know, I do not respect, you know, because I seen a video last night with uh, our uh, sister, dark skin activist, uh, about why she uh why she hate being dark skin. Yeah. Well I I'm 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 gonna say it like this. Piggyback off of what she said in that particular particular video. You know I could say the same thing about me because and not I, I know I know who I am because I know this is how I'm going to be and who I'm going to be until I die. Right. Until I close my eyes for the last time. That that another change. I understand. I clearly, consciously, and fully understand that. Okay. But however, that don't mean I got to like it though. Yeah. Just because I have a firm um, understanding about it don't mean I have to like it. And don't, no, I don't like the fact that I'm dark skin because of what life basically was she was putting out because of what comes along with that, being dark skin, especially in a country like this. And that's just the reality of it. And I've never openly spoken this before, but even, you know, when I was in the so-called conscious community under them same Luwabic teachings that polite was under, that started boiling in my skin. You know, questioning my own, uh, you know, darkness. And what purpose is it for me to even be on this planet? Because of what comes along with that. As a matter of fact, a lot of people don't know. But it was taught that Malcolm X felt that same way. Although, I never remember or heard him publicly showing it or speaking about it. But it was circulating around that that's how he felt. I guess before he eventually uh, transitioned from this life. You know? And we're talking about one of the greatest... Uh, pioneers of our struggle as dark skinned descendants of slaves born in America in this country. So, uh, so I mean, you know, and, and, and like I heard you speaking about in one video about these brothers and sisters like Mumia Abu Jamal, Asada Shakur, uh -huh. or, or Sandiata Akali, who was involved in that case with Sister Asada Shakur, locked away, Matula Shakur. The stepfather of Tupac Shakur, you know what I'm saying? I mean, locked away in these American prisons or dismal crooks, as no dry legal once called them, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, you know, throughout America. And, 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 and how no one is reaching out to help them, right? You know, to help get them out. But you had millions of uh, dark skin descendants of slaves born in America helping that Nelson Mandela get out of prison 3,000 miles way over there in South Africa sure did. on the other side of the Atlantic you see what I'm saying but you didn't have that same energy to help these brothers and sisters get out of prison and if they did it was through the help of Caucasians sure was okay how about that but yet you want to call Caucasians devils. Huh. But every time, most of your, most of your support, even though Mumia Abu-Jamal is still in prison, 
And, and with the help of white people is why that death penalty sentence was overturned against them. That death penalty sentence was overturned <coughs> in, in, in court. And then they, they're still trying to, uh, you know, work on getting him out by the neck since he's just doing the uh, life sentence. Now, seeing recent pictures, both of them bad. But you don't got none of these people out here in the millions, or especially in the pro black conscious community you understand trying to get this man out of prison nope. now you know they overturned this man's death penalty sentence in Pennsylvania it's more like the chance they said he did and it took decades for them to overturn that death penalty sentence because mm. some crackers wanted to see him stay on death row so they could go on and roast him. Right. The white cop that got killed, his, they could watch him die in that painful way. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. In that painful manner. So, what that tell you? If they, over, if they realize that They overturn that note. Yeah. So it's obvious that it's open all the way holes for him now to get out of prison, period. When they overturned that death sentence, that should have been meant that they should overturn that case altogether. But you know, in Pennsylvania, being in Philadelphia, in the courts of Pennsylvania, being the racist that they are like everywhere else in the criminal court justice system across America, this is what you get, you know? But you ain't out there trying to work help free that brother. This brother, uh, Sandy Alba Akali, came up for parole, or uh, still supposed to be coming up for parole. He's been denied several times. He's been reported that he was a model inmate and everything, and he's still been denied. Mm hmm but I guess they taking it out on him because Asada Shakur escaped and been in Cuba since then. So I figured since they can't get Asada Shakur back over to the United States, I guess that's their trophy. You know what I'm saying? That's their uh, uh, casualty trophy as far as that brother's concerned. But none of you out there helping them to get out of prison. You still got people in the uh, John Africa movement. Yeah. That uh, a movie that Boone Jamal was associated with in Philadelphia that's still rotting away in prison, more likely on trumped up charges. You see what I'm saying? That was involved in that uh, Philadelphia, 85 Philadelphia uh, John Africa community bombing by the U.S. government. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But yet, yeah, they are uh, still languishing up in prisons throughout Pennsylvania. You see what I'm saying? And no one is helping them to get out of prison. We talking about decades. The, the, the three brothers that got uh, released from uh, Angola in Louisiana, the Angola three, it was with the help of white people. Mm -hmm. I saw a documentary on one brother. He was a uh, they had a house set up for him. I think this brother died as soon as he got out, about a few days later. But they had a house set up for him and everything to come back to in New Orleans. It was white people. Wasn't no black people living in there, holding it down for him. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So all this black solidarity, black love, crap, huh. y'all be talking, yeah, right. black unity, y'all be talking. Y'all ain't Y'all ain't with that program for real? No. You you know what I'm saying? So so like I said before, you know, you gotta be you gotta be thanking the white folks for all for those of our brothers and sisters who have been able to get out of prison from under them circumstances. And even other brothers and sisters who wasn't as as even uh, popular, famous or prevalent as they were. Mm -hmm. That was falsely accused and got out. 
to the help of who? Caucasians. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Many of them throughout this country. There was a brother in Ohio who was on death row since 1975. He got out, I think, a few years ago. Him and another brother that was on death row together. And who's uh, uh, and who helped them? Caucasians. Oh. Yeah. So don't sit up and tell me. You understand? Uh, you, you 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 know that you really love black people. You don't love black people like that. Nope. Most of your activists, like I said, that that was able to get out of prison was at the hands of Caucasians with the help of Caucasians. You ain't see. If you seen any black standing outside the prison gates waiting on them, those were their immediate relatives. They, those were their biological immediate relatives who weren't no pro-black uh, MFs. Nope. No, that brother, that 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 brother that's on that uh, I think he's one of the editors or directors of that Vice TV show. I think it's Vice News or something like that. But uh, he's a former Black Panther out of Baltimore, Maryland. Did like I think what uh, forty years or something like that, and they let him go. And and, and, and uh, you know what I'm saying? And what, what what was the new Black Panther Party at in place of the old Black Panther Party that he was once a part of? What was the Nation of Islam at? Mm -hmm. Or any other organizations like that when he walked out of Maryland State Penitentiary. It wasn't nobody, like I say, but the white folks standing outside the prison gate waiting for him. Yep, that's it. So, like I said before, you understand, don't sit up here and tell me you love black people because you don't. And, and like I say, if they convict this guy to life, for what happened? Do you see what I'm saying? Don't be surprised. And know what, what background he comes from, like I warned you just before. From the same organization I was once a part of. Okay? So, you know, like I said before, you know, uh, I, I, I have to understand, and just like us all, we have to understand that that I know it's hard to accept the truth. Yeah. But if you can't do nothing else, at least do that. At least have enough self integrity about yourself to do that. You know what I'm saying? Whether it's against you or not. Yeah, it's hard for us to accept the truth when it's against us, but it's the truth. Yeah. And we got to come to grips by accepting that. Whether we like it or not. And that go for us all. Because ain't nothing perfected about any of us. Right. We all got skeletons in our dark closets, <laughs> of course. And you, you, you can sit up here and say, well, yours is worse than mine. Mine's ain't worse as yours. Listen, dog skeletons is in, in the closet is dog skeletons, okay? Skeletons in the dog closet is skeletons in the dog closet. It ain't no way of differentiating it. It's just like when you go to the penitentiary and you say, well, you're worse a criminal than me. <laughs> and you committed this crime and you committed that crime. Or, or my crime ain't worse as yours. But the white folks don't see it like that. <laughs> the prison administration officials don't see it like that. You are criminals. Right. And that's how all y'all gonna be treated and looked at. Yes. Yeah. You got a number. You got a number, right. You got a number. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'm just now, I'm just now forgetting my number I done had for you. Right, right, right. I'm forget, I forgot one of my numbers I had for you. Yeah, right. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. So I mean, you know, like I said, I mean, man, <laughs> you, 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 you know, <laughs> this thing ain't no game when you dealing with.
truth. It is what it is. And, 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 and uh, you know, like you say, those of you that's in religion, if you say you believe that the truth will set you free, then be open-minded to it all when yeah. it comes yeah. in that package. <laughs> yeah. You know, and don't be flip-flopping about it. Right. Either. You see what I'm saying? So, I mean, you know, uh, and, and, it's, and it goes back to the pot calling the kettle black. <laughs> you know? You can't call the kettle, you can't call the, you, you know, the kettle can't call the pot black. The, the, the pot can't call the kettle black when you, when you got dirty, uh, you know, uh, skeletons in your closet too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Ain't none of us uh, right. Especially in this country, like you said earlier. Oh, well, I ain't, I like them big roads over there. Huh. That be doing this and doing that. That's on drugs, that's homeless, that's yeah. out there committing crimes, selling drugs, and whoop, a prostitute. Whoop. I'm not like, look, the white folks don't look at you any different from living in a, a, a ran down apartment shack in Harlem <laughs> or, or, or in the Bronx somewhere. Or and watch some damn well because you live in, you know, in the project somewhere because you got a house in Malibu Beach or, uh, you know, or, or in the Hamptons, you still a nigga. Right. That's all that matters. <laughs> they don't look at you no different. And that's just anything else in life. You know, you are no different, especially as a Negro slave in this country. Mm -hmm. you, you are looked upon no different regardless of your status the police ain't gonna recognize that when they decide they want to blow your head off hello anybody listening huh. yeah okay that's what I'm saying you know they don't give a damn about that <laughs> you, better, you, better, you better recognize that so when you when you try to separate yourself from other dark skinned descendants of slaves, just know that <laughs> you know, and I'll be honest with you, I, I I've had that same mentality mm -hmm. and, and, and it's still bits and pieces of it in me because of the wretchedness that I don't honestly want to be associated with concerning other dark skinned descendants of slaves, but I have to understand that I'm going to be judged the same like them. Yeah. And that's just the reality of it. Okay? That is just the reality of it. And if we don't understand and wake up and realize and understand that, then this is what's going to keep bringing us to the demise that we're headed on the collision course to, which is called extermination. Mm. And we won't be the first ones, nor probably the last ones, as a group of people, to face such a uh, unfortunate circumstances in this world. You see what I'm saying? So, like I said before, uh, we need to uh, look, look and consider that fact. You know that. <laughs> You, you know, and this is why everybody could run over us like they do. This is why anybody could come in our black communities, as you call them, black communities. But this is how anybody could come in our soul communities and do whatever the hell they want to do. Yeah. Now you got white boys, like I was saying in another video, coming in our community, disguising themselves as black people in the costume, dark skin, costume, mask. Mm -hmm. Coming in there like they're crippled blood. Gunning down real dark skin people, you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Then leaving the neighborhood, riding in the sunset. <laughs> and you think the police gonna waste their time investigating that? No. No, that was just another nigga that killed. That was just a nigga that killed another nigga. Right. You don't care nothing about that. <laughs> Why you think they ain't solving the murders in Chicago? Right. As much as you think they should. Why you don't think they solving the murders in Detroit? 
like they should. Why you don't think they solving the murders in New Orleans, in Atlanta, like they should? Plenty of murders in uh, certain parts of New York where a lot of our soul people are, like Harlem. Uh, certain parts of Brooklyn like that style, Bronzeville, and, you know, in the Bronx, and the list goes on. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. In Philadelphia, you see what I'm saying? In Baltimore, why you think a lot of so-called black-on-black crime, crime ain't being solved? You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. All of uh, you, you know all the murders and killings taking place among our people in Memphis and places like Little Rock, Arkansas. Because they don't care nothing about niggas killing niggas. There's a lot of black people in prison for killing black people, but that's not necessarily true either. If you go to especially these big major cities and even smaller cities, and you go to a local police department and, and ask them for a big printout of all the unsolved murders in a city consisting of, you know, soul people killing other soul people, and you will see the list ringing up in the thousands and thousands and thousands until you can't even count. You see what I'm saying? This ain't no game. I don't care nothing about us killing each other like that. Gotta wake up now. If you come and now if you come to a dog skin person killing a white or Caucasian person, now that's a little different. That's a little different. Even if it's some of the poor ones that that's, that's getting gunned down by soul people over bad drug deals going wrong and stuff like that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I tell you what. You ain't going to kill too many white people or uh, poor rich and they just simply sit by and let that go. Nah, this is America. Wake up. Wake the hell up. <laughs> but as far as dog skin people killing dog skin people, they don't care nothing about that. They can care less. And that's just the reality of it. You're just a nigga. And the only reason people like Dwayne Wade's uh, relative who got killed in Chicago, uh, the only reason they they uh the they killers was caught because he's a celebrity and he pushed the issue. And that's just you you know what? And, and, and in some cases, in some cases, let me tell you something. In some cases, they don't even care about that. Because it took years before they finally caught up with the killers of this ex-NBA player out of Memphis, Tennessee. And one of them was his wife. Okay? He was trying to get that money he had, and, you know, they found his uh, body, uh, you know, in a nearby uh, town in Mississippi, right outside of Memphis. I think they killed him in Memphis and then took his body and dumped it somewhere over in Mississippi. <laughs> you know? But, but, but it took them years before they found out about who did it. But that just goes to show you they not rushing. Even if you a celebrity and you get killed by another dog skin person, they ain't been a rush. And if they do finally wait till they look into it, it'll be a long time. They don't care nothing about us, nothing about us like that. We would not remember we were nothing but slaves in this country. And that's what we always gonna be looked at or looked upon as. Got to understand that. Still to this very day. So, you know, uh, I know I've been rambling, but let me tell you, I just had to put that out there. Because I had to piggyback like I saw what the sister was saying in regards of not liking the fact of my dark skin because of what comes along with that in this country it's not pleasant 
I don't care how silky and smooth my skin is, like those of you in the pro-black conscious community say, we have the most smooth skin on the planet. But what's, what's that getting us in America? <laughs> You see what I'm saying? So, I mean, you know, <laughs> this is the reality of things. <laughs> this is just the reality of things. And we have to understand and wake up and realize that. And that's the whole point about it. And that's why when you trust in the people like this, these black conscious ones, like uh-huh. Sarnetta, like the brother was talking about, like uh, Farrell, like Tariq, <laughs> like Umar Johnson, like Louis Farrakhan, uh-huh. like Malachi G. York. This is what you get. And like his student under him, Polite, who's now in trouble with the law. You see what I'm saying? Uh-huh. And, and like you say, this is going to blow up in Sarnetta's face. This might even cripple his uh, platform altogether, especially if they find polite guilty. Right. So, I mean, you know, this, this ain't no joke. <laughs> and these are heavy weight accusations against polite. You see what I'm saying? But um, to, you know, want to upgrade not only his felony charges, but to raise his bond. If they talking about raising your bond, they must figure like they got a serious, serious case yep. against you. Yeah. When they talking about bringing you back to court to raise your bond up, come on. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Stop playing the black social media land. Stop playing. This is serious. And with that said, uh, yeah. I'm going to... Uh, you know, rest the mic back over to you, brother, and let you carry us out or do whatever you want to do or carry us on out. And uh, thanks, the audience, and thank you, brother, yes, sir. for uh, allowing me to speak. No problemo. Your pleasure. Uh, I just want to say this, and we're going to call it a night. We did, what, three hours, I think? Yeah, three hours. Yeah. yeah okay. Pleasure, brother. So yeah. Here. Uh, they said, appreciate it, Talil. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Likewise. <clears throat> Actually, I thought this was going to, I was going to chill out today. I, I, I did not plan to make any videos or anything. Uh, I took care of most of my business in the early part of the, of the, of the week. And I'm like, I can just sit back and just chill out. Okay. I'm not subscribed to uh, a lot of these channels, but you know, they always pop up in your recommendations and stuff. And so I seen this video and I'm listening to it. And you heard what this goofball, this Herman monster, he was talking about me and he's angel nut nut. We call him angel nut nut, but they call him angel snut nut. Yeah, you know, so you making mark, see that you know they making marker of your name. They know what your name is, but like again, I haven't never done nothing to none of these people. The only thing I've ever done was question your ideology and your opinion. And I'm not gonna let you just slide and you know it's all gravy. No, you you got to explain this. And then Sonetta's talk about. I'm crazy. I was in a mental institution. You're the one, sir. You're the one believing an invisible God. You're the one believing the white man's Bible. You're the one that believe in all this goofy stuff that you're talking about. Well, if I'm the mental patient, I offer you a challenge, sir. I can come to your platform. You can come to mine. We can do it in public. We can do it in private. I will whoop you intellectually, your ass. Bring it. Bring your Hebrew Israelite garbage to me. And we'll see who the crazy one. And I guess you'd be embarrassed because this crazy guy, Guy Nollywood Jr. said, not only am I crazy, but I didn't graduate from high school, which is a damn lie, but if that's what you want to believe, so be it. 
So this guy that didn't graduate from high school, and you know something, for somebody that graduate, didn't graduate from high school, my functional ability is pretty, pretty high. Pretty, pretty well. Matter of fact, I did that video, and I read an excerpt from Sister Noble's book, just for guy Nollywood, gay Nollywood, boombox guy, cartel guy. I did that on purpose, purpose to show him how real well, <laughs> tongue tied because I'm tired, how well I can read. Pretty good for a guy that didn't graduate out of high school. Pretty good for a guy that got you upset. That got all, pretty a guy that didn't graduate out of high school got all of these blackity black. Pat African, blackity black, Hebrew Israelite, more size temple. Got all you suckers upset. And you can't do a damn thing with me. Because one-on-one -on -one put me in the, in the proper environment to debate your happy ass where you can't cut nobody off. Nobody give a damn about your feet when you getting hurt. Shut the hell up. I say what I got to say. You can't cut me off. I whoop all of y'all ass. I take all of you on. All of you at one time. By myself. I don't need nobody else. Because you live in fantasy world, delusions, pseudo scholarship. You want to be something that you never was. Never been no damn African. You ain't never lived in no Africa, dumb Negro. You ain't never lived in no TP. You never lived no Aboriginal life. I'm an Aborigine and my daddy was a. Your daddy might have been, you're not. Because if, if you was, you've been born that way. You wasn't. You was born, you was born American Negro. And I can guarantee you that's what's on your birth certificate. American Negro. I can guarantee you black, colored, or whatever Negro is on your passport or whatever. All this made up garbage. What the hell? Can you explain to me what, what is a comedic Hebrew Israelite? What is a, a comedic Israelite? Have you ever heard of that, uh, Talib? That's the first time I heard that we met when I heard you speaking about it on a platform. I never heard that <laughs> spoken about on any platform, not even the Hebrew words. We like uh, forums like uh, what's that? I C U. Yeah, I P S C U X Y Z W. Yeah, yeah, I never heard you even speak on it like that. Yeah, yeah. that's the first time I ever heard you uh, speaking like that. I yeah. never heard uh, uh, Yahweh being Yahweh's uh, camp. Or uh, what's that brother out of Israel, the moment Israel been Amy Carter's camp. Yeah. Or the mother camps like I, I, I S uh, U P K or whatever, uh, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then, then them other different uh, splintered uh, groups in, under the Hebrew Israelite religion. You know, I never heard them uh, referring to themselves as comedic Hebrew Israelites. Mm -hmm. So that's a new one on me, brother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too. A comedic, a comedic Israelite. What the hell is they just be making any kind of guard? I bet there's other crap out there we don't even know nothing about. These, you know, these folks just just make up stuff and just do anything. You know, they just want to feel smart. And this, this is what I want to say in conclusion. Is another reason why they don't like Angel Snuff Number Seven because when they come in their mind, they the smartest thing in the world. Because I done, I got the scholarship. I got the information. And then when they start talking to me and I start questioning them and I start seeing the flaws and the errors in their in their uh, doctrines, then they get all upset or whatever because in their mind, they're the smartest thing in the world. Mm -hmm. Reality check, you're a dumb Negro. There's a reason why they call you a dumb Negro. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're all caught up in all that old feel good, I think I'm smart garbage. You're not smart. Because if you're smart and you had the scholarship and everything that you claim, you we wouldn't be living the way that we're living. Mm -hmm. You ain't changed nothing. And we done had this kind of stuff for years. Mm -hmm. And the problem is still here. Has it gotten better? No. Then they come to you with excuses. Well, brother, because of this and that. They blame the black people too. Well, black people don't help us. You already got thousands and thousands of black folks helping you. What the hell do you need? A lot of these folks, they get thousands and thousands of dollars, millions of dollars. Hell, Tariq Nasheed just raised a million dollars in about a month. You got plenty of help. 
got lots of money, your condition don't change. And then after these Negroes rip you off, fill your head with all that feel good stuff, then they go on vacation to ring the sheet. He take his biracial wife and his biracial biracial wife and biracial children on your dime, take them to on vacation. And that's acceptable. But I really don't care what happened to polite. I really don't. Personally, I don't care. I really don't care neither, but yeah, I, I just don't. want to put, yeah, and, 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 and I don't care neither, not to cut you off, but I don't care neither because good riddance to rubbish. Right. Absolutely. Right. Just like what happened to Malachi, yeah. you know, what eventually happened to Yahweh, then Yahweh, yeah. and people like that. Good riddance to rubbish. to rubbish. That's all I got to say about that. And, 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 and I'm gonna be honest with you, even ones that's not famous, yeah, or known in the black conscious community like that, or even period among our people, you know what I'm saying? That we come from, you right. know, whatever happens to them because of something that they cause the brain, they own the mind, yeah, through you know, good riddance to rubbish. Absolutely. I, I, I'm getting to the point now, and I, I, I just want to add something else into that before we get up out of here. Uh-huh. That look, man, as far as these brothers, these soul brothers and sisters on the streets killing each other, man, I, I, I have to be, I have to be completely honest. And you know, I've always been a man that has tried to be honest as much as possible. Yeah, I could give less than a damn about them killing each other because yeah. that would be less of them humanly as possible standing in our way. Absolutely. When it comes to us, uh, you know, uh, trying to become liberated. Because with people like that standing in our way, only uh, causes the problem to linger on, which stands in the way of our liberation as well, whether mm-hmm. people know that or not. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Because... We, it's because of the fact that we come from slavery, we've always uh, known nothing but how to be uh, aggressive toward each other. Right. And of course, you know, violence comes along with aggression. So we've always known nothing but how to be aggressive. That which the average of dark skin, uh, you know, descendant of a slave born in America don't know how to, uh, you know, be uh, cordial, civil most of the time without being aggressive mm-hmm. toward one another. And that's just a fact. Because we come from slavery, damn it. Yeah. So, like I said before, you know, uh, you know, as many as brothers and sisters, unfortunately, that's killing each other in these streets across America, hey, let them die off. Mm-hmm. We better off without them. Go ahead, keep taking the floor on, brother. So yes, take us out of here. Yeah. Yeah, I just want to say this, and we're going to roll on out of here. Actually, you, you reminded me what I was going to say because I sort of forgot, you know, old age and everything. Yeah. But uh, the energy. Now, the energy that Sonetta took to try to bash me and put me down, where's that energy? in your black unity and i love the black people and all this kind of stuff where's that kind of energy doing negative things doing positive things all that energy sister noble and the demons of darkness all that energy that they got and came to get look how they unified and came together to try to get me where's all that energy for the enemy where's all that energy Towards the problem, solving the problem. We don't get together, even we though we don't like each other, we don't get together and do this. They don't do that to solve the problem. But they do it against other individuals like myself. They can get together, unite, and they don't even like each other. Aquan don't like them. God don't really like them. You know, I keep posting. Their words, what they say about each other, which is not from 10 years ago, 
or five years ago. This is recent word that they just said a couple of months ago, recently, and here they are. They said, the hell with all that. I'm a, we all can get together and get Angel Snuffin' Up 7. Why we don't have that kind of energy, that kind of drive to get together and do something positive like the Mississippi campaign? But you'll but you get together to try to bring down another brother or sister for foolishness. Dumbass stuff. But that's how we are. And I keep doing what we're doing because that's what we do. But I do understand that all stories don't have a happy ending. And if we continue to keep going the way they're doing, our people are doing, stay ignorant and keep supporting garbage like Sonetta or Polite and all these other leeches, their future is not it's not going to be very bright. But brother, could I add one more thing in there? Just one more thing. I know we got to go. Yeah. But listen, man. Do you know this is how our external open enemy is able to uh, manipulate and destroy us as a community even quicker? Because of this type of this unity and disorganization among each other that we got going on. And do you you don't think Caucasians and other nationalities are paying attention to the ignorant stuff we say and do to each other over social media, let alone in, in uh, face to face life on the streets? Do you think they don't be all uh, do you you think they just be off into their own thing? You don't think they be paying attention? You know what I'm saying? You don't think they actually be paying attention to all the stuff we be saying against each other, especially those of us that claim that, claim that we want unity for our people? Mm -hmm. You don't think they be watching? You don't think the white supremacist groups be watching? You don't think the government and the feds be watching? You don't think these uh, law enforcement agencies be watching? Why do you think they're killing so many of us, uh, dark-skinned soul people out there in the streets? Because they see how much so, so much hatred we uh, exhibit toward each other. Where well, they figure, well, hell, they don't, they don't like each other. They don't love each other. So why should we give a damn about a pop, another nigga dead? Mm -hmm. Ain't nobody going to, uh, you know, defend them. They hate each other. See how they get on social media and talk about each other. And because of social media, do you realize how the rest of the world actually see black people even more now? Mm -hmm. You thought people hated us prior to social media? They really hate us now. They see how we be killing each other live on live Facebook videos when people be video videoing themselves on Facebook Live, all you see is black people killing other black people. Or what they call that 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 the uh, YouTube page they got, World Star. Yeah. Which all you got all you got showing is the black people fighting and beating each other's ass and all this kind of stuff. You don't think the rest of the world is looking at that, paying attention to that? You don't think you, you, you know then you want you wonder why we are hated so much. You don't see listen, if you see Caucasians getting on there doing each other like that, that's rare. You don't see them on social media badging each other, disrespecting each other, mm -hmm. talking about each other like black people do. You don't see Mexicans or Hispanics doing that. As a matter of fact. Because I'm an avid boxing fan. Mm -hmm. I'm not not to get off the subject, but because I'm an avid, avid boxing fan, I watch a lot of boxing videos about boxing. And do you know that other nationalities be getting on there, uh, you know, talking down on our on, on our great fighters like 
Floyd Mayweather. I'm talking about the ones recent, not the ones from the past, like Muhammad Ali, Sugar Ray Leonard, George Foreman, people like that. I'm talking about Mike Tyson. I'm talking about people like Floyd Mayweather, Deontay mm-hmm. Wilder. Them is the most hated black boxers out there. Because people from other nationalities get on them black boxing social medias and disrespect them, call them niggas and everything. Even though they done nothing to, uh, to, to warrant that disrespect. But it's, you, you know what I'm saying? But they won't call their own uh, boxers from their own nationalities that. And especially, they fighting one of their fighters like the Mexicans or they fighting a white fighter or something. You know, you are, if y'all, some of y'all to go on the boxing videos and see how black boxers are disrespected. Black boxers from America, I'm talking about, man, are disrespected. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We don't get no respect. I don't care what we do, whether it's sports, entertainment, we don't get no respect. That's how much we're hating. I mean, y'all, y'all, y'all need to really check yourselves. Y'all need to really look at, look, pay attention. Look outside y'all own little bubble and see how these other nationalities look at you when you go out there on social media calling each other bitches, hoes, niggas, labeling each other, talking about like you was talking about, you know. Well, we, we ain't none of us better than each other. Like you say, when well, we are ex cons, criminals, yeah. prostitutes, yeah. no fiends, and they look at you just like that. You know what I'm saying? But you ain't you. You, you know you not you not you not you not you not see y'all. Many of you not hearing that because you're still in your own self denial. But you, one day, hopefully, you'll figure it out before it's too late. And if you don't, oh, well. I rest my mic. Yes, sir. And uh, <clears throat> I guess Razzie will take us out of here with his with his comment saying, but to live, we don't need them. We must respect ourselves and keep moving on. The world is sick. Yeah, we don't need them. We, we, we don't need them. But while we talking like that, while we talking like that, you understand me? We need to be putting that in action. Not on social media. Not, not, not in the book. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Not standing behind the podium every Sunday like Louis Farrakhan or Eric Muhammad or somebody. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We need to be putting that in the action. Yeah. But I'm going to respect that comment, but I'm saying we need to be putting that in, in action. Because yeah. we're putting that less in action than in words. Well, our problem is a lot of us, we're all over the country. So we can't do something, you know, like regional or whatever. We're so scattered. Exactly. You know, that's our problem. But and we don't and we just don't really don't have the numbers like these people do. Right, but that exactly. is that's because we are different. So when you know, like I said, we just stay over here in our little corner, do our thing, keep them bastards away from us, because this this is the per this is the purge. Keep all them that that poison away from us. Because you know something? I was doing just fine till I invited all these outsiders, you know, uh, you know, uh Maurice and Craig and Guy and Noble. Problems start happening. Bringing all this, all this foreign, you know, mindset into this house, start having problems. But you know, but you want to show unity. You know, you want to try to show, but they're not about that. They're selfish. It's all about them, and they tell you all the time what I want. They don't give them what's in the best interest of the whole. What I want, you know, Gay Nollywood Junior. Quick to say that. What I want. They all about what they want. They don't give a damn what's in the best interest of the whole. And they bias and prejudice against certain people. Oh, you gay. You married to a white man. You too small. You too short. You too black. You too light. 
It's all they got. They they all messed up. It's nothing. They nothing but divisionary for them. Exactly. Oh, he a homosexual. Yeah. Oh, he a uh, he 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 he, uh, uh, he retarded. Right. Or oh, he uh mental health. Oh, yeah. He a mental health patient. Or oh, he a uh, slow. Right. Uh, he dies less. Or uh, he poor. He yeah. Crackhead. Yeah. Oh, he, uh, you, you know, he blind. Yeah. Like Stevie and Ray Charles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Know? Yeah. Like, are you motherfucking, uh, excuse my point, <laughs> are, you, are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so, the, 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 let me, let me ask you this. When we was on the uh, actual slave plantation picking cotton and sugar cane, hmm. you didn't think they had retarded black people back then? Huh. You don't, you don't think they had uh, 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 blind black people back then? Mm. You don't think they had, uh, uh, you know, alcoholic? Because we was drinking alcohol during slavery, brother. Yeah. No, don't, don't kid yourself. You know what moonshine is? Yeah. That's what they used to make down south, even during slavery. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we, 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 had, we had, and you know, uh, Alcohol is considered as a drug, whether it's many of you uh, know it or not. Right. So, at that time, you, you could have called uh, some slaves dope fiends too, right? Mm. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm just saying. I, I'm just saying we we had uh we had we had prostitutes in slavery. Actions prostitutes. Mm -hmm. We had homosexuals in slavery. Is they getting quiet in the comment section, or <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm just putting it out there. Well, I don't know about the. I don't know about having a homosexual slave. Yes, I know. they did. Yes, they did. They breed in homosexuals. Yes, they, 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 yeah. Research it, brother. It, it, it is in there. It, they, 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 you, you know, white man. Well, I'm thinking about. I'm race. thinking about. I, I'm, th I'm not. I'm thinking in the manner that we're used to seeing the homosexual. I can understand because of, of uh, sexual abuse. You know what they went through because you know they they did that to to them. But I'm talking about in the manner that we're used to seeing gay and lesbian people. I don't think that that you never seen. I've never seen a report. They they was exhibiting that type of behaviors. Well, we. Maybe we might need to do some extensive study on that. I don't know. And that's I, also I, I, also. I, you know, I take that back. Yeah. Maybe not in that manner. Yeah. But the white man was running up in brothers. Oh yeah, yeah, right, yeah, no doubt, <laughs> no doubt, because because he's a homosexual. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No doubt, no doubt about that. Yeah. <laughs> we know that. Uh, uh, and also too, you know, you had, you had, you know, they put brothers. Uh, uh, you know, that's how some brothers, even in slavery, became boxers. You actually had some some of our first black boxers came out of slavery from the slave plantation. Mm -hmm. Way long for people like Jack Johnson and Joe Lewis was thought of. Uh huh. You know, they just, of course, they wasn't known in history as they were, but they were slaves. Right. You absolutely. Know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and, and the white slave bastards used to pay and bet on them which one was going to win. It was called, uh, I, I think, what they used to call it, a uh, cop fight or a group fight. Well, a good a good them. movie that showed that that I really enjoyed to watch was uh, Mandingo. Yeah, yeah. Ken, you know, Ken Norton played in that. Okay, okay. Yeah, that was a good example of that. You know, he, he raised Ken Norton up to be a boxer. Yeah. And they, they no, well, actually, it wasn't boxing. It was fighting. You know, whatever you had to do to win, it's fight to the death. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you're actually fighting for your life. Yeah. Yeah. It was, no, I beat you down, and you go back to the slave plant. No, if you don't win, you ain't coming back to the slave plantation. Mm -hmm. See that? See that? Yeah. So how, how you think all this violence among us happened? All this uh, uh, aggressiveness we show against each other. Yeah. You started on the slave plantation. Yeah. You don't think brothers, brothers in the, uh, you know, picking that, uh, brothers and sisters picking that uh, cotton under the 130 degree sun, however hot it was out there, when they was picking that cotton, you don't think they got frustrated with each other? Right. 
and we we'll want to fight each other and we'll fight each other. And the slave master probably have to break them up. The overseer have to break them up and make them get back to work. Yeah. And all that. You, you don't think none of that was going on? Mm-hmm. That's where the form of aggression toward each other comes from. Yeah. And then, of course, they use the, 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 the tricks that we know of. You know, give one slave uh, more biscuits than another one. You know, yeah. divide the young ones from the, from the old ones and you know, all the tricks, the male from the females, you know, the old tricks of the trade. And we still fall for the same old okie doke even in 2021. Still doing the same thing. They divide the black men from the black women. You know, they, they, well, actually, it's to the point we do it to ourselves. It ain't, it ain't all about them. We do we do a good job of dividing our, our, our males from the females. Yeah. yeah. And, and, pass, and pass that same divisionary Slave ass yeah. behavior, whether you pro black or black conscious, black or black, pass that same old slave ass mindset down <laughs> from generation to generation. And, 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 there, and there it goes. Yeah, there it goes. Right. Do you know why? Do you, do you know? I remember Fair Khan said something that I can't agree with. He said that you got many black people running around scared to talk to each other, scared of each other, yeah. scared to even just look at each other. Where you think that come from? Mm. A, a aggression. We started on the plantation. Right. <laughs> and, I mean, you and, know, and, I mean, you know, you could you you could you could you 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 can you could you could twist it, turn it, uh, 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 put a twist on it all you want to, but a lot of our behaviors that we exhibit against each other come from slavery. Mm-hmm. Although, you know, as time went on, of course, you know, these drugs like crack cocaine even helped made it worse. But that's where it originated from, brother. Uh -huh. It's from a slave plantation. <laughs> you know, a lot of our women, uh, uh, you, you, you know, our women, the reason our women lash out at us the way they do, that started on a slave plantation. Yeah. Because she looking at you like, I'm in chains like you in chains like me, nigga. Mm-hmm. Right. You ain't got the will to get this enemy up off us like that. And then I gotta carry your black ass. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why do you think that's that's that come from slavery, brother? <laughs> that that definitely come from slavery. That's why women don't see us no other way. That's why they don't see us no other way than than the way they've been taught to see us. Which is as little boys. And see, that's why we need, that's why the brothers, we need this Mississippi campaign. Yeah. Because you get together and pull that off, they have no choice to respect you. Like, damn, the Negroes took over a state. And really, that's the easy part. The hard part is maintaining it. The, the difficult part is to take it from a poverty-stricken state and make it wealthy. Make it functional. Make it like everybody around the world want to be like Mississippi. Like I want to be like that. That's the that's the difficult part. Because actually taking control of the political systems and putting yourself in a position like that. That's really the that's really the easy part. Because really, the people in Mississippi are already in those positions. They just don't have a plan. They don't have any vision. They just don't. They just don't have. They don't know what to do. So the Mississippi campaign, we guide them and show them this is what you need to do. This is the plan. This is how we can be successful. If you follow these steps, if we do this, you can be successful. And this is going to be the end result. Because right now, they're already in those positions. They don't know what to do. And the people there, even the ones that's black or whatever in positions, they're not with the people. They're looking out. What can I put in my pocket? Right, right. So see, it's a lot of changes, a lot of things that you have to do. But mm -hmm. we're already in those positions. We can easily, because the population is so large. And then another thing we need to understand, this is not a black nation. No, it's not. This, we already said from the very beginning, it's a sanctuary, safe haven state. Nothing changed except you want to take control 
of the state so that you can have a place that benefits you for a change. Your life in America does not change. The white man will still be in Mississippi, the Arabs and whoever else is there. Nothing is going to change except the leadership. Putting yourself in a leadership position so that you can benefit from this nation like you should anyway. But since they're not going to give it to us that way, then we're going to have to put ourselves in a position to take it. But it's not a black nation. That's why we don't give a damn about your sexual orientation, whether you live with a dog or don't live with a dog. I don't give a damn what you do in your house. It's about putting yourself in a better economic position, but put yourself in a position where, like, we could have each state must depend on the federal government, but as a state, you got your own medical facilities and your own laboratories and stuff. We actually could use our scientists and could, could come up with our own COVID-19 vaccine. It's a lot of things you could do as a state. We can go in there and clean up the budget because we, you know, them, them folks that's in the in the uh, in the uh, political seats, they don't give a damn about black people, and they blow money and screw stuff up. We can go in there and cl clean all that stuff up, take advantage of what government of the state can give us. That has never been done before, and all these women and the children said, "Our daddies did that. My daddy was part of that." Right. And see, so the thing about it is. We just don't want the men to be involved. We want to lead, we want the brothers to lead the charge, but we want all the people to be involved, even if you're a drunk alcoholic. Look, a drunk alcoholic, he can spend a few hours in the field and pick some damn peas. Matter of fact, don't you know that kind of activity is really rehabilitation? Get him off the bottle. Say, hey, brother, you know, do you want to be in jail? Do you want to go out here and pick some peas? You know, go out here and feed the chicken. Most of those guys in jail or whatever, especially if they're not accused of violent crimes, why they can't go out in the farm? Matter of fact, they do have programs like that where they have prisoners going out to these farms and feed the animals and pick crops and, and, and uh, uh, put down crops. They, they got uh, programs like that right now. But we just want to extend that. We want to, re help. We want to rehab our people. We don't want our people locked up in jails and prisons. So, of course, you can always have idiots, so we're going to have our jails and prisons, but we don't have to fill them up and make a, got a, a business out of it. We want our people free. We want our people liberated. What sense of, a, of us talking about we want this safe haven and we want to seek liberation and freedom? That's our goal. But hell, our jails and prisons just as Full as anybody else's jails and fr pr uh, prisons is. We want to get our people out of them, out of those places. You can spend that money housing prisoners. You can do that, spend it somewhere else. Put it into education or something. Put it into more uh, up-to-date, modern-day uh, farm equipment or something. You know, there's other things that you can do. And you guide the people to a different way of life so they're not materialistic. Spend more time with your family instead of working on, you know, 40 hours a week, you know, 60, 70 hours a week. The hell, stop being materialistic. Learn how to live more cheaply so that you can be with your wife and your children instead of on the job that you fall in love with a co-worker and go through all that drama, messing with other people so that you and your wife and your children, y'all can spend time with each other so you, you can know your children. Most of these people don't even know what their children are doing. Don't know nothing about them because they at work all the time. But see, that's the purpose of the man going out doing the work. Mama stay with the children and nurture them and father go out and do the work. But these fathers think they doing something special. I'm the one. I'm the breadwinner. Nigga, that's your role. That's your job. The, your wife is at home dealing with these children. It ain't easy messing with no children 24 hours a day. That's her job. That's what she's doing. That's her role. Why you going out and make this money to feed the family? You piece of trash. I'm the bread when I make the money. That's what you're supposed to do. And so these children, mama working, daddy working, who the hell raising the children? MTV. 
you know, MTV, the drug dealers. Right. Everybody, <laughs> you know, everybody, everybody raising your children except you. Right. <laughs> so we want to we want to change all that. Mississippi campaign is about recycling material, cleaning up the environment, because we gotta live this. We want to make our water more clean. We want to clean up our air. That's what the Mississippi campaign is about. What's this of getting liberated and free and you still die from cancer, from lung cancer, you got bad food on, it don't, that don't make any sense. So all these things have to be addressed. It's a lot of things that, that's, that are I address right now, but it's a lot of things that I really don't even have no idea of, but that's the beautiful thing about unity because what I don't know or, or don't, or I miss, you can catch it. See what I'm saying? This is where you can probably put your woman in a position to say, now nah, that's a man. Right. Absolutely. You can put your children in a position to say, that's a father. That's right. That ain't no punk. That ain't no coward. That ain't no sissy. Right. That ain't, that's a man. That's a man. And, 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 and the fact that it would be at a point where the Caucasian just can't walk up to you to your household mm -hmm. and do anything they want to do either. That's right. You see what I'm saying? It's not going to happen. Right. And then you got <laughs> your celebrity people who come to Mississippi and they'll just be mind-boggling. Like, wow. I didn't think this was possible. Look how these people live. Ain't no trash in their yard. Nowhere we go in the state. They keep everything all nice. They got good food. You know, people are quartered with one another. Like, damn, I didn't think this was possible. I'm going to tell you the truth. It's in us. It's, it's in us. We just not we just not put in the right environment. But it's in us waiting to come out. We're not no nasty, evil people. We're, we're not that. We're not that way. We just we just put in a situation. Like, like you got certain animals. They won't bite you in the right situation, but you put like well, the perfect example is a pig. I'm gonna say this, we're gonna get out of here. The perfect example of this is a pig. People think that pigs are nasty, dirty, filthy animals. No, they are not. That's a stereotype, that's a lie. The reason why pigs, you see them as they are because they are domesticated and they are locked up. And if you can, if you put a pig in its natural environment, which is a peccary or a boar, or even some of these domesticated pigs, they they don't like eating slop. They like eating roots and berries and stuff like that. They are omnivorous, and they 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 willing to eat anything. But if given a choice, they like berries and roots and things of that nature. And pigs don't have sweat glands like dogs. So they use mud and dust to keep to keep uh, cool. If you go to a slaughterhouse, you will see cows and other animals just as nasty as a pig because they are forced to live in this corral and they don't eat all the grass. They don't stump down all the grass, all the vegetation. Now it's just a big muddy mess. And they, they can't go nowhere, so they got to take a duck, so they land in their own feces. Pigs are not dirty animals. That's a lie. That's false. And we are not dirty animals. We're not niggers. We're not human garbage. We're not trash. It's the environment. So the Mississippi campaign is about changing the environment. And not changing the environment by force, you're gonna ask the people, beg the people, if you do this, this is what we're gonna get. You're not doing this just for yourself. You wanna put your your children in a better position in life. And this is how they would be living. We may not be here to see it, but this is the result we're gonna get from our behavior and our actions of today. And there are a lot of people who love their grandchildren who really have concern for the future generations, they're willing to do that for our children. And guess what? We will become the greatest generation ever produced because nobody thought 
we could break the shackle of slavery. But this activity will show you we're slaves no more. We've broken the shackle of slavery. No more excuses. We're going to get the job done. That's the Mississippi campaign. These other people don't know what the hell they're doing. They really don't know. They're just out here trying stuff and whatever, and, and it feel good. Mississippi campaign is well thought out. It's analytical. It's logical. It can work. It ain't about feeling good. And it's about what is in the best interest of all. It's not about what Angel Snuffin' Up 7 want. Because what Angel Snuffin' Up 7 want is me and Terry Ellis in Mississippi all by ourselves. I don't want Talib there. I don't want Razzie there. I don't want Twin there. I just want... <laughs> that's what Angel Snuffin' Up 7 want. But what's in the best interest of the people, that's different. <laughs> Right. Right. So, so you can you can want your favorite whoever you want. That that's your personal prerogative. Right. But it ain't got nothing to do for the for the whole of the people. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, what I personally want is just me and Terry in Mississippi all by ourselves. Terry said, "Damn, everywhere we go, where the people gone? It's just me and you. We got a whole state by ourselves." That's what that's what I want, but that's not reality, and that's not the way it should be. It's about what is in the best interest of a people, because we deserve we we all a part of this. It ain't a few about what you want. We we suffered, not just you, you selfish bastard. And that's what we're dealing with—a bunch of selfish bastards. And on, on that note, we're gonna get out of here again. Uh, Frank Gary, Gurry, whatever you call yourself, Sotnetta, whatever. Step to Angel Step Number Seven. Bring your comedic Hebrew crap versus the Realities Temple, video by video. You ain't gonna want to do that. I dare you. He's not gonna do that. He's a coward. None of these suckers gonna do that. Video by video. You, we don't have to meet in person. Whatever subject you want to talk about. Your spooky ass. Believe in spook God. Got the nerve. Talk about somebody crazy. You believe in all that spooky, invisible garbage. Keep quoting from the Bible. Some dead ass people died a long time ago. We are the living. We gravitate to those things which are alive. And we don't need no Bible. We grew out of that long time ago. Those who come here. We don't need that no. We don't need no Bible written from some some dead people. And clearly, it didn't do them no damn good. <laughs> and you bragging about it. Y'all need to take y'all. Y'all the one crazy. And we out of here. Thank you for listening. And I think we did make our goal. I think we had about 11 or 12 blocks. <laughs> we got 11 or 12 blocks. Oh, yeah, earlier... Earlier, I was trying to, uh, it's, it disappeared. Oh, there you go. Yeah, I was trying to, I was trying to put something in the chat room and this happened. All this garbage popped up. I'm like, what's up with that? It did. I seen it, it happened to me before. I don't know what's up with that crap, but it won't let me write. It wouldn't let me write in the chat room. Then it started. It start writing all these number ones all by itself, you know. I'm like, what the hell's up with that? I don't know. Maybe it was a ghost to live. Well, damn. Hey, ghost, if the only thing you know how to do is write one, you should have kept your illiterate ass where the hell you was at. Did they come out the flying saucer? <laughs> 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 Yeah. Yeah, so all right, y'all. On that note, we out of here. Share the video, comment. Thank you for your participation. Deacons of Reality, Razzy, Brother Talib. Yes, sir. 
So, Sister Ann, she's here in spirit, I guess. I don't know where she's at. But uh, even to those who don't like us, who's listening, we can do better. We can do better. And if we are sincere in our heart, we need to do better. We shouldn't hold on to hate and dislike and keep tripping on crap forever and ever and ever. We got bigger fish to fry because if we could pull this Mississippi campaign off, it'll be on and popping. And all this hate and all this garbage that we've been through, you pull the Mississippi campaign off, you'd be like, damn, we could have done that a long time ago. The respect of the world you're going to get. The respect from our people themselves you're going to get. And our children... And the women stop running, talking all that old crazy stuff because now they can see their man has finally arrived. That sleeping lion woke up. Lion, hear me roar. God is on the scene. It's only popping. Soul power forever, y'all. Soul power. That's what's going to get the job done. And on that note, like our brother Don Cornelius used to always say as in parting, I wish us love, peace, and soul. We already 5,000.